Hello there, welcome back to Crafters TV. Welcome to a very special show. You are, of course, joining us for a craft along on our pop out numbers collection. It was so busy uh, when we uh, recently launched it. I know loads of you have been looking forward to this show. Loads of you have got everything that you need uh, all set. We're going to be crafting along. We're going to have a special guest joining us as well. Uh, and, I mean, if I was here telling you how to craft along with me, it wouldn't be that fun. Uh, but thankfully, that's not the case because uh, the ever gorgeous Leanne Chivers is here. How are you, Leanne? Oh, I'm incredibly excited about this, Joe. I really, I am. I'm, I mean, I'm thrilled to have a full day here on Crafters TV with all of you. But to do my first craft along with you, with this brand new format that we've got, I mean, I'm incredibly excited. Um, and one of my favourite products as well. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be great fun. Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be loads of fun. We're all going to craft together in real time. You'll be able to uh, all go uh, together, which is fantastic. If people wanted to join us, and if they haven't got their stuff yet together, uh, Leanne, it's not too late, is it, to get yourself ready? It is never too late to get yourself ready, Joe. Um, I've got a little list here that I'm going to glasses on so I can read. Uh, this is where I get very school, mom, just set mm -hmm. you up for what, what you've got to expect. Um, all you need to get your hands on is um, our Gemini pop-up numbers die collection, of course. You need some 12 by 12 card. I'm going to be using lovely lilacs at the pearl card. If you've got a different colour at home, it doesn't matter. 12 by 12 quintessentially English paper pad I've got. Again, any patterned paper pad will do for you. We've got crafter's companion white stamping card that we need, silver glitter card and Spectrum Noir Finesse alcohol proof ink pad and some 3D foam pads. That's for the number five card. And then for the number 28 card, we've got our um, Gemini pop-out numbers again, of course. We've got our 12 by 12 textured card in cool tones. We've got our Centura Pearl Turquoise card. We've got our Crafters Companion White Stamping card, your Nina Solar White, and your Spectrum Noir Finesse Alcohol Proofing Pad again. If you don't have those exact colours, or you don't want or like those colours, you can still follow and craft along and just use the colours that you've got at home. Fabulous. I love that you've bitten off, uh, you know, you've had a good bite of the show. You've got two craft alongs today uh, in this show, Leanne. I mean, craft big or go home. Everyone else has been doing one. Oh, no. Chivers is in the building. Boom, two. I mean, really, you know, you've got to set the bar, Joe. <laughs> you've got to set the bar for everybody else to reach, haven't you? So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Right. It's going to be a loads of you. We're all going to give you a chance to just get settled and get sorted. Uh, you've got about five ten minutes to get yourself ready uh, before we get into the craft along so if you do need to grab uh, any more bits maybe uh go for you know a nervous toilet break maybe uh, you know get your last minute cuppers you can do that uh, lots of you joining us already i'd love to know who's going to be crafting along with me who's got their stuff ready to go uh because the fantastic thing is i'd love to know who is going to be joining it's so nice that we all craft together at the same time uh, janine's in from australia good day janine whereabouts in australia are you let me know uh, caroline saying hi from edinburgh Kate's in New Jersey, uh, Jesus is in Chicago, I can see we, uh, Gwen here, she says hi, let's get popping, we will get popping, don't you worry about that Gwen, uh, Katie says good morning everyone, Evelyn saying good morning from Colorado as well, there's loads of you in today, uh, Diane saying hi from Tennessee, uh, Lucretia is saying hi from Alabama, Ray's in Tennessee as well, Susan's here, uh, Crafty Ladies in NYC, we've got a lot of New York repping in the house today, uh, Leanne, our East Coast is Karen's here as well, I can see, as is uh, Blanche from a very snowy West Virginia uh, too. Now, I've got Leanne, I've got all of you guys uh, with me. What I need now, of course, is a very special crafty guest. And I am so pleased to say that we've managed to track one down. Michelle is with me. How are you, Michelle? I'm fine, Joe. How are you? Hi, uh, Miss Leanne. Uh, Hi, how are you, Michelle? I'm fine, thank you. So good to have you join us, Michelle. I know people know you uh, on social media. Is it Michelle Knits For You is your handle that you chat under normally, isn't it? Yes, it is. Awesome. Uh, now, whereabouts in the US are you, for anyone that doesn't know you? New Jersey. <gasps> oh, New Jersey. I can oh. speak New Jersey. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, I've watched too much Jersey Shore. We won't get into that, uh, Michelle. It's not that kind of show. Uh, but I'm so glad that you've been able to join us. Have you got everything like set and primed and ready to go there? I do. Fabulous. And... <gasps> You've been going already. <gasps> check oh, you out. Check you Boom, out, Michelle. <gasps> Very nice. Isn't that gorgeous, Leanne? Yes, that's the one that Sarah pinched off me. Yes, it's gorgeous, <laughs> Michelle. 
<laughs> is that a team platinum apron I spy there as well, Michelle? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Michelle, I can already tell you are going to be a hoot. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you a chance to get yourself all ready to go. And what we're going to do is we'll drop into you periodically and see how you're getting on. How does that sound? She says it sounds awesome. Brilliant. Uh, right. Uh, Sandra says she is ready to craft along. Uh, Pam says, Joe and Leanne, uh, did my card arrive in the post? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it did arrive in the post. Will you check the post when you go back over to the office? Yes, I will check the post when I go back to the Thank office. Thank you. In uh, fact, please I might let me just know. get my phone out and just text the office right now and see, see where's my card. Maybe we could get it turned up right. Because maybe Pam it could come right on Because Pam sent me a message on Facebook said she was going to send me a card. Oh. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll make sure we show it, Pam. I'm going to text them now while Joe's chatting to you. Okay, let's because we are over here in the studio. We don't really go over the... Well, I don't get to go over into the office very much. Sometimes don't see things or pick them up. Uh, but I'm excited to find out what that is. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know if you've tuned into this show and you're thinking, gosh, this show looks fun. I really wish I'd got those pop-out numbers. So then I could do the craft along. Well, the thing is, it's never too late because... Uh, you can watch any of our shows back at any time here at Crafters TV and that means that you can grab these today in this show and then once they arrive you can come back and do the whole craft along in real time and craft along with us. Uh, in there what you're going to get is you're going to get two brand new dolls, two gorgeous bold bright paper pads in here. Uh, you're also going to get all of your pop out numbers as well. Now the pop out numbers are fantastic because they are all about what well, making the inside of your card as exciting as the outside but also what you can do uh, is create lots and lots of different card concepts uh, with these as many have you of you have been doing as well they give you so much dimension there as you can see on your cards they are fantastic as well as that you're also going to get these stamps and dies here which are going to enable you to do all of the gorgeous decorating that you might want to do and you're going to get some beautiful stamps in here as well so you can get all of that today 80 pounds or 99 dollars that's 64 pounds or 79 20 dollars as a platinum member so you can definitely grab this you can get all this stuff home and then you can get going uh, trisha says hi joe leanne i'm taking part in my first craft along welcome I've been so excited for this, been looking forward to it all week. Uh, I'm using different pattern paper, but I can't wait to learn the new techniques. Thank you for doing this with the pop out numbers. Uh, and Sue Henderson, says, Sue Henderson says, Sue from Woodham, ready to go. Uh, Panda Crafts, Amanda the Panda, says, afternoon everyone, just creating and watching. I don't have this kit, but I still need to watch and support uh, uh, everyone that is crafting along. Uh, loads of you are crafting along. The other great thing is, um, if you've got, pictures of the makes that you've been making. And there's so many of you making so many awesome things with these uh, dies. I'd love you to send those in as well. Studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. What I'd also like you to do is at the end of the craft along, uh, send in the pictures of what you have been making. But I think, Johnny, uh, we've got Johnny and Charlotte in the gallery today. I think, judging by the comments, Johnny, everyone seems just about uh, good to go. Uh, so what Leanne will do then she'll let you know what she's going to do. She'll do it. We'll recap it, and then we'll give each we'll give people regular breaks, won't we, Leanne, to get caught up, just in case we, uh, you know, because we all craft at different speeds, really, don't we? We do, and there's no hurry today, which is what I love. I'm really loving the idea of just being able to take time, relax, and show you right from the very beginning with no pre-prepared blue beater steps exactly how to do it um, and then of course it's always there for you to go back and watch time and again if you want to and follow along those instructions so I think it's going to be great I'm looking forward to it Joe if I start to rush uh, tell me to slow down Joe. don't you worry I will I'll rein you in don't you worry Good. about that but I think uh, we're ready to go Leanne without further ado if you are okay I'm ready. ready ready I'm ready but we haven't got the foil press have we so we're going to start with the number 28 card and I think this is a great one because it shows you um, how to use the dies individually but also how to use a couple of them together and it's the simplest way the format that the dies were created for where you've got a half fold card you open the card you've got a little bit of decoration inside of that lovely bundle and then you've got your 3d numbers popping out so first things first you are going to need a piece of your colored card stock I'm using this particular pad which is my very very favorite these are the cool tones it's got all of the purples and turquoises in there which I absolutely adore so I'm just going to get a turquoise and I'm going to get hmm, I want to get this one so I'm getting a piece of the turquoise card from there and then I've also got um, 
a piece of white cardstock here as well. And Joe, I've just wafted my measurements onto the floor. So if you bear with me oh, a second. Oh, do you want me to come and get your I measurements? Get so you're all right. You're just going to pop into the basement for those. Yeah. Um, you go down. Any questions, any comments that you've got as we go along, just make sure. You've wafted them into the middle of the room. Uh, but just make sure you can drop in the comments. If you've missed anything, you want Leanne to repeat anything at the end of any of her um, sections of the craft along, you can just let me know over in the comments and I will get her to repeat anything or you know go over anything uh, uh, do you want us to speed up do you want us to slow down obviously whatever the consensus is uh, we will go with won't we Leanne have you retrieved your wafted measurements now I've been down into the basement and I've got my measurements because I want to give you all of the precise numbers I know that's really important and of course I need to give you an in inches don't I because that's the way you're going to need it Absolutely. To you. So I've got my guillotine and what we're going to do is cut a five by seven card base, which means I'm going to cut a piece of card which is 14, uh, sorry, 10 inches by seven inches. Okay. So we'll go to 10 inches first and I'll cut this 12 by 12 piece of cardstock down to 10 inches. And then I'll turn that round, line it up on the seven inch mark and cut it at seven inches, which gives me a 10 by seven card blank, so I can fold that into a five by seven card. And then I'm going to prepare my white piece at the same time, so we'll cut out two pieces of cardstock first, um, and you can get those prepared, and then we'll look at how we're going to fold them. So your white piece is going to go inside of your card, and I'll just show you here how it's just ever so slightly smaller than the blue piece behind. You can see you've got that little border there, that little relief there's your white and there's that little blue border so it needs to be a fly's eyelash smaller to fit in and give that lovely little border okay. around the outside so you're going to cut this at nine and three quarters by six and three quarters so your white piece of cardstock gets cut down to six and three quarters which I've got there by nine and three quarters which is just a quarter of an inch smaller than the blue main card base that we cut down. So I've got both of my pieces cut there now. Let's see if you're all at the same position. And we've got, I'll show you as I line that up, a white piece to go inside the blue piece, which is a fly's eyelash smaller all the way around, a quarter of an inch. So you've got that lovely insert there. So 10 by seven, nine and three quarters by six and three quarters. Perfect. I think we're all good. No, all one, good? Uh, no, no problem so oh. thus far. Yes, okay. I, think I mean, I'm thinking on. I'm going too fast. No, I think you're right at the moment. I'm I think you, you maybe we'll right. do the next step and then we'll have a, a very brief pause. Uh, I'm just checking okay. on everyone then if that's all right. Okay, of course. Right, so then what you're going to do is, with a ruler, you're going to find the halfway point on your white piece of cardstock, your nine and three quarters by six and three quarters. Find the halfway and mark it. So I've, I'm marking nine, nine centimetres at the minute. half of nine and three quarters? I'm not actually sure. Is, is it It's 4.75 and a bit, about 4.82, isn't but it? But then you've got to say the eighths, haven't you, when you're doing well, inches, I mean, and that's going to mess with my head. So which is why I'm saying do it in half. Now, here's a, here's a cheat for everybody. Okay. Let's, I'm going to show you a cheat. If you can't work the measurement out in your head, which very often happens to me, what I do is I actually just fold my piece of card ah. like that, and then I go pinch. Just put a small pinch in. And put a small pinch at the side, and then I fold it at that side and go pinch. And then with my ruler, I just line up the pinches. Great idea. And do my, and that's just easier than trying to work out the actual, however many eighths and 27 well, millions it is. That's because a good, I can that's a good hack, that one. It's a, just, it's a quick and easy, this is how I cheat at home. So um, then you've got your halfway mark, and then we're ready to actually start lining up the dies and cutting. So that's what, I mean, this is how easy these numbers are. Should we crack on with the cutting, or do you think we're good to, should we have a uh, check? Should we take a, should we take a quick pause? Yeah, Take a slight not? pause. Yeah. What, should we, just, should we have a bit of a musical interlude, Johnny? Got some, any music cued? Can we do that? No, oh, we don't do that in your here. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, uh, should we... Let me just recap what's in the deal. I'll just show you the paper pads as well. I just want to give you a little brief pause uh, just to get yourself uh, caught up, which is fantastic. Uh, the pads are available individually if you do want them individually as well, but they are in there. I just love them. Basically, remember we did the 8x8 paper pads? Were the 8x8 textured card socks? Were they the original paper pads that we did, Leanne? Yes. 
Awesome. So these are like a bigger version of those, aren't yes. they? These are 12 by 12 version. Yes. 36 sheets. It's a colour core, which is awesome. It's 230 GSM, so it's a good weight for, well, it's a good weight for everything, really. Embossing, constructing, die cutting, uh, you name it, you can do it with this. Uh, and then you've got the, um, the brights in here as well. So you're getting all of that in there. Uh, remember what you're also getting in the collection, of course, are the dies and stamps uh, to decorate everything and the also, also the concept of the actual numbers as well. There's loads of stuff on the show. Do you know what is on this show as well, which I uh, will take you through later? Some A3 Centura Pearl cardstock. Boom, bang, a bang. That is going to be big. I know we've got A3 cardstock uh, back in stock, but you've got that there as well. So, uh, Michelle, Michelle's, Michelle's, Michelle is our crafty yardstick today. That's how we're using Michelle. Well, I mean, she's more than that, obviously. She's a very dear friend of the channel, uh, but Michelle is Michelle is caught up. So uh, how are you getting on there, Michelle? You all right? Yeah. Oh, you, Fabulous. Michelle's racing ahead. She Look is, at Michelle. You are. She's faster than me. Michelle, Michelle. the pocket rocket there in uh, New Jersey. Loving that, Michelle. Okay, right. If Michelle's good to go, then Leanne, Michelle's I think that is your cue. Michelle, do you want a job as a demonstrator? She's way ahead of me. I mean, that's fantastic. Well done, Michelle. So what you're going to do is take your two dies. Now, I'm just going to point out to you how cleverly these dies have been made. So we're going, I'm going to ask you to come in on a really close um, shot so I can show you. And I'm going to show you on the number eight here. So as we come in on this really super close shot, which I know our fabulous... Oh, look at that. I mean, honestly, we always get the shots here, don't we, at Crafters TV? Every single die has got a little notch here and here on every single number to show you to, where to get the perfect position to line this up on the half fold, which means your numbers point, pop out evenly and easily. So it's really important that you line those notches up with your pencil line. The number two has them as well. Every single number has them. You line them up and then your numbers work. So we're going to start with number two first because we're doing 28. So number two is going to go about there for me. That looks good to me and what I'm checking is that my pencil line and the reason I did a pencil line rather than a scored fold line is I can see that running through those two notches and I can see it really clearly so once I've got that in place what I like to do is just measure up my number eight and see if I've got them you know eyeballed by eye jaw by eye. Um, where I've got a, you know an, an evenish border left and right doesn't have to be 100% accurate, it's just you want it evenish left and right. So when you're happy with that position um, and you're ready to commit, then just get a piece of repositionable tape to keep it still and use a little bit of repositionable tape so that your die doesn't move. And then we'll do the same with the number eight. So I'm just making sure that that score line is running right the way through the center of those notches and another visual and what I will also like to do is just get my ruler and just make sure that the tops of both of those dies are hitting the ruler at the same time in a straight line um, and that lets me know that I've got those perfectly aligned and straight and I'm ready to commit them to cut so awesome. another little bit of repositionable tape here and I'll just like to do that uh, just to take off any excess line up your plates pop it onto your pop your plates together for your gemini and um and then put it through the machine awesome uh, and this would go for your junior this concept card as well would it leanne sorry this concept card here would that go for your junior or does it need to be a big this machine? one wouldn't no because it's right. five hang on five yes no would it's the seven along the seven seven inch and your plates are six inches wide so you basically just have to make it a little so would you would you amend the details here and make it a six by five card you'd make a six by four six by four okay six by four to go through your junior and um no problem at all so then if you're doing a six by four you're going to cut a piece of card stock which is six by eight in awesome. size do your half fold and then it'll go through your junior and you'll get two numbers on there comfortably as well brilliant Okay, so once they've gone through, we're going to remove our repositionable tape. Just peel that up carefully. Get my finger underneath it. I'm really excited to see everyone's finished 
um, I am. projects. Do you know what I love is all the finished products and the, like, all the slight variation that you get at the end is always lovely as well. So yes, the moment you get your projects finished, and absolutely, make sure you're snapping a picture and emailing it to the studio. We can all see what everyone's done, which will be exciting. And then you're, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody's done. And then you remove your dies, and there you can see your number 28. Now, what I do at this point, before I rub out my pencil line, is I grab my scoreboard, and whichever, it doesn't matter which scoreboard you're going to use. It can be your Ultimate Pro, it can be your, you know, your big boxer board like I've got here, the big score, any, any of the boards, because you've got your pencil line in place. All you do is line up the pencil line, so that the pencil line is at the top of the line and the bottom of the same line there. And then you score up to your number. Not through, just up to. Because you want this to be a solid number popping out. Then you pick up your score line at the other side of the number. Score up to the next number for your half fold. And then do the same here. After the number, all the way down to the end. So you're just finding a line on your scoreboard. Your pencil line helps you get that lined up perfectly. You do not score through your numbers. You only score the card base at either side. Fantastic. Okay, once we've done that, we're then ready to fold. Now, the dies give you the score lines where you need them. So the dies give you your score line for the pop-out pieces here, here, and here. You've put your half fold score in yourself. Um, and actually what I like to do at this point is just take out my pencil line. I guess the easiest point, otherwise it's going to be on your uh, valley fold, isn't it? It is, it's going to be on your valley. And you know, we're going to decorate the numbers so you don't have to rub it out on the numbers because oh, okay, we're perfect. going to piece them in. But I just go along and take out the pencil line. And if you do it nice and light, it's gone. You can never tell that it was ever there. But it's just helped you line everything up. Now what we're going to do is pop our valley fold in place. And I just like to give that a little bend, so I'm bending it. And this is a little bit like I was doing in um, Craft Fold this morning, Joe, where I'm starting to give the card a little bit of memory, but I'm not folding it properly. I'm just kind of encouraging it along where it's going to fold. And then we push the numbers forward, and I do the same thing with these two folds here. I give it a little pinch. So pull that forward to myself, little pinch, and push up. So you can see what I'm doing there is I'm pushing the number up, and I'm pushing the top of the card down. And that saves having to try and get your fingers in and pinch it. If you try and get your fingers in and pinch, you can create creases and you know, it might not look as um, finished or as pristine as you would like. So I find this the easiest way. So I push up, push up the number, push down the card. So push up the number, down the card, and it puts that crease line in place for me. And then I'll do exactly the same with the number two here. So just get my fingers underneath, push up with the two, down with the top of the card you see it puts both of those score lines in for me and the creases and I haven't even touched those creases yet so it makes it nice and efficient and then all you do is you pull this up towards yourself and you pull that bottom number up as you go pull this forward and that puts that crease in place do the same with the number eight push it forward push the whole piece up hold it still there you get that crease in place once you've done that and it's all got a little bit of memory this is where you can carefully now fold the whole thing flat and awesome. so when you fold it flat it so just puts, really take your time then is just the premise take here, is your it, the, um... time take your time and it gets everything in place where it should be for you so you see now what i've done is i've pushed that whole thing down which allows me to burnish all of my creases now and i'm doing that along the bottom of the numbers and i'm going underneath there because that's where my number two is so i'm burnishing that one i'm burnishing here and here and here and then I'm going to turn that over. Just make sure that it opens nicely. And I'm going to just rub across the top of the card there. Because that's where, and you can see now the indentation coming through. That's where the top fold of those numbers are. Give that a nice burnish. And so when I open this up now, I've got perfect pop-out numbers without any horrible little creases or contortions on the inside of my card. So if you wanted to do a solid monotone colour, that's how you would get it really nice and precise and cleanly done if you're not going to do any matting and lean, which of course we are. Um, but it just makes that sure that your numbers crisply 
come whilst, forward. Uh, and whilst White on White doesn't really work brilliantly on TV, does it? It is a really lovely, it's White on White I think is really lovely and classy. We just don't do it very much on TV because you just, you can't really see it properly, can you Leanne? You can't, no, absolutely Joe. And I do, I personally love White on White. It's one of my, especially with a little bit of glitter or glitz in there. It's one of my personal favourites. Um, but yes, just looks clean and classy. Awesome. Should we take a little pause there, Leah? Yeah. You're right there. Yeah, I'm uh, right Should we drop back in uh, with Michelle and see how yes, Michelle's let's. getting on? Uh, Michelle, how are you doing uh, over there in New Jersey? Let's drop in. Is it coming together all right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks fabulous. Oh. Can you show, show me it from the side as well? Oh, boom, Michelle. Michelle that looks perfect, is a pro. Leanne, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely perfect. Michelle is an absolute pro. I mean, that's gorgeous, isn't it? It is gorgeous. I get the impression you are a seasoned crafter, Michelle. How long have you been crafting for? Uh, with you guys, about a year. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to have you. Have you been... I'm guessing you do a lot of knitting, judging by your uh, username. Yes, I do. Oh, awesome. What's a, what sort of stuff do you knit? Because me and Leanne, we love a bit of knitting and crochet, don't we, Leanne? Oh, it's my life. I really love it. I really do. It's, I just Crochet, I love more mm. than knitting, I have to say. Um, what do you prefer, Michelle? Actually, knitting. Okay. What I did jackets and hats and cows and scarves and fingerless gloves. I made a sweater for my husband. I made a sweater for myself. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, sounds nice. awesome, sounds doesn't lovely, it? Yeah. I bet it's very chilly there. I bet it is good sweater weather, isn't it, there in New Jersey? Yes, it is. Right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Michelle, a pleasure to chat to you as always. We're going to drop in uh, on you after the next step, if that's okay. Yes. Fabulous. Uh, loads of you still chatting away as well. Liz McLean, it's a big day today for Liz McLean, uh, Leanne. She says, hey, Joanne Leanne, I'm just beyond excited. My first ever Gemini has just been delivered. Uh, sadly, as I'm working from home, I have to keep working until 2.30. Uh, I just had to log on and let you know, I only ordered it Tuesday. Liz, where are you? Because if you've got to keep working until 2.30 and you're here in the UK, you're, you're all good. I mean, if you're in uh, Central Europe, Germany, uh, I mean, you've only got three minutes left, so whoop, whoop. If you're on the East Coast, you're in Central Time or you're on the West Coast, then commiseration. So let, let me know what it is. A lot of people talk about that pinch method that you used, Leanne. Uh, Melissa and Therese saying they both do that. Uh, Beth's got this collection, so she really needs this class. So she's thanking us for doing that for her. Uh, Suzanne says, I'm back. I just finished my pop-out number explosion box. I've sent the picture in. Now I can come and hang out with you. Lovely lot. Susan, we love it when you come out and hang out. You come and hang out with us. Marisol as well says, I love the numbers. Never thought of buying it, uh, but now I am going to get it. And that's a great point. I think for some people, Leanne, and remember, you can come and watch this back at any time the, the same launch deal that we had for you is available right now i think for some people the shows where we we present um our products and we give you lots of ideas and we go through demos quickly they're great aren't they to inspire maybe more experienced crafters but some crafters really do need that sort of out the box totally back to basics absolutely and i think it's lovely and sometimes we just need to refresh and sometimes it's just nice to check that what we're doing is the correct way or the way that's advised um, to make sure that we've been doing it to get the best out of our products. I think it's brilliant just to relax, take a step back and, you know, together go through using some of these more complex concepts. Although I have to say these are not complex at all. They're very easy. Mm, absolutely. Uh, well, I think judging by the comments and uh, everyone in the comments, we're pretty much uh, ready to go. Melissa is our social media superstar for the show today. So Melissa will let me know uh, if there's anything I need to shout out about. But for now, I think we're ready to crack on again, Leanne, if you are. Cool. Well, we've got now the... 10 by 7 piece of cardstock in that lovely blue from the textured card pad and I'm going to score that at the 5 inch mark. So we score that at the 5 inch mark, fold it over, burnish it and that is our card base ready to stick our numbers inside. So what we're going to do is take that piece, take our white numbers, Take a tape pen or some wet glue, whichever you prefer, and we're going to adhere that inside of the card base. So I'm just going to use a tape pen. Now I'm going to put tape all the way around the outside, all four edges, and a little bit on that scored edge either side, but nothing at all in the middle here that could squidge down because if you've got a wet glue when you go too far and you get it in here somewhere your number won't come forward okay. it'll stay stuck, stuck solid so make sure you only use your adhesive 
on the perimeter. And I do one side first, stick it in, and then I'll do the next side, which means I get it in perfect position. Now, you've used a tape pen here, Leanne. Yep. Uh, are there other glues that you could use? Would our tacky or our all-purpose work here? Do you know what? For this, I would I would recommend a double-sided tape or a tape pen. Okay, perfect. Because when you've got your tacky glue or your all-purpose, it's a wet glue, and so it's got a mind of its own. So when you're squishing it down and flatten it to get your adhesion, you know, it's likely that you might get a little bit of squidge out in your numbers and then it's going to stick flat. So for I me, so, what yeah. we would call a dry glue from a tape pen... And you pen, really don't want it to wiggle at all, do you? You don't, no. You definitely don't want it to. So I'm going, what I'm doing now is I'm lining up my white insert on the score line. You can see that there and there. And then what I'll do is just bring that over and close it, which has grabbed that for me. Perfect. Then I'll close this piece and I'll put my adhesive in the same places. So I'm just going around the three edges and a tiny little bit on those two folds. Nothing that's going to interfere with the mechanism. Close that on top, give it a good rub, and there we've got the cut insert inside the card. Could not Love be easier. That. Could really, not be really easier. Simple. Now, should we do the outside? Let's do the inside. Let's decorate the inside of the card. So I've already done, I'm good, let's let's cut them out. Let's do it. So let's get the guillotine. I'm going to use the Century Repel cardstock now. Okay. And also that blue textured piece that I've got a little bit left of. So I've got a little bit of my blue textured cardstock left here. Awesome. And then I've got my Centura Pearl here. And we're just going to cut a couple of um, little panels, little decorative panels to go inside the card. Now, this is where scrap pieces come into their own. Your bit box. Your bit box, yes. Get your bit box out. I wouldn't be cutting into a brand new piece of Centura Pearl to do this at home. I have to be honest. I would very definitely be using my bit box but just for demonstration purposes for you today I've got a full piece um, you do whatever you feel more comfortable with at home and so I've got my remember nine and three quarters width so I'm going to cut a piece of card nine and three quarters uh, sorry I beg your pardon seven inches so that was the six and three quarter one so we want a piece six and three quarters long and then I'm going to have that um, an inch and a half wide so I'm cutting a piece at an inch and a half now, Joe, and I'm going to do two pieces like that. So I want a piece, which is six and three quarters by one and a half, and I'm going to have two of them. So um, let me, one and a half, this one. There we go. So that's those two decorative pieces ready. And then with my scrap from the 12 by 12 piece that 12 by 12 piece that we made the card base from. I'm now going to cut this as well at six and three quarters. So it's the same width. And then where I had one and a half before, I'm now going to have one and a quarter. So I'm lining that up in the one and a quarter mark. See, all the time when you're matting and layering, you see I'm coming down by a quarter of an inch. Um, and that is gives you a nice kind of eighth of an inch border. You can, if you want a deeper border of a quarter of an inch, you come down by half an inch in your sizes. So I'm going to one and a quarter on that now, trimming that. So I've got my two pieces ready to go. Just reminding everybody there what we're doing. So now I've got my pieces, I'm going to use my tape pen. These, this bit here that we're doing now, you could use your wet glue for. Um, but we'll just continue with the tape pen for now. So I'm and, I mean, you can customise the sizes here with these if you want to make the sentiment, this top of sentiment for the sentiment a bit smaller, a bit bigger. Is that is that up to everyone at home, Leanne? Of course it is. Okay. It's your card. You decorate it as you see fit. Um, this is just, you know, me using my little scraps and making a couple of decorative little pieces. So I'm going to use this here and then I'll show you what I'm going to do. And you'll notice that the textured piece is a little bit longer than the blue centura piece I've got. Never fear. Just stick it on and then from the reverse with your scissors you can just chop that off. Fantastic. There we go. Then they are. The it's a, it's a very simple processes for these to get very effective cards aren't they? Absolutely. It's very, very easy to do, very simple um, and really impressive. I think they make a, a real impact, these ones, Joe. So now with these pieces here, I'm going to stick this inside to decorate. So this one's going to go just along the bottom here. 
There we are. And that's the same width as the white piece. So that makes a nice little border there. And then I'm going to match that border at the top. And all it does is bring in the colours that you've used on the outside of the card to the inside of the card and just gives it a little bit of extra interest. There we go. That's going along there. And all the time, I always do this, check that I haven't stuck anything to stop my numbers opening and closing because then you can um, take them away and fix it if you want to. So they're in place. I was looking at that, I was just admiring that myself, and you needed to look at that, and I, I just had it turned away and looking at myself, thinking, <laughs> oh, isn't that really lovely and pretty? Sorry, yeah, no, you can see it, there you go, it looks really lovely and pretty. So we've got those two borders in place. Awesome, we're going to take a slight pause then, Leanne, if that's all right mm. there for you, is that all right? Give everyone a chance to catch up, uh, we'll drop in uh, on Michelle in a moment. Uh, what I would really like to remind you of, though, is the A3 card slot was in the show, he's very rarely... Do you know why it's very rare that we have A3 cardstock, Leanne? You'll, you'll back me up here. It's because Simon won't let us send it to the USA, isn't yeah. it? That's why. Yeah, it's too big. It's too tight, basically. However, yeah. we've managed to sneak some in. We're going to have to get Simon on the show one day. You know, he gets such a bad press, doesn't he? <laughs> He's going to have to come and defend himself, I think, at some point. You know, it'll be like the people versus... Uh, Simon Davies, that's what it'll be like when we finally get him on the show. Get him on Wake Up Call, there you go. Uh, you probably hate the idea. So let's share with you what you've got in here. It's a lovely collection and you've got a great price on it as well. So what you're going to get in here is you're going to get 25 sheets of the A3 Centura Pile Snow White Hint of Gold. So it's like a pearlescent silver. Do you know what it's like? It's like marshmallow with a hint of gold is what it's like, isn't it? Marshmallow with a little bit of gold flake dropped in it. Isn't it's it? one of my favourite, favourite cardstocks. That's the hint of silver, is it? That's the hint of gold there that, that you're getting. Uh, Single-sided, 25 sheets. Then you're going to get this one here, which is the hint of silver. Oh, do you know what it reminds me of? You know, like a metallic... You know you have a white metallic car? That's kind of what it's like, isn't it? This is like a satin wedding dress for me. The, yeah. hint, the hint of silver is mm. my very, very favourite. It's when you see a really expensive wedding dress and it's that beautiful kind of taffeta or shot silk and it's got that lovely sheen to it that's what that looks like for me mm, really good then the pièce de résistance the crème de la crème is of course the ivory because the ivory is awesome because i think what this would be great for wouldn't it numbers out of one card blank out the other because we're look, talking about double-sided why is double-sided so special leanne double-sided is incredibly special because if you're making a gift box or if you're making a concept card something where you want the inside to be just you're not going to be decorated you want the inside to be just as beautiful as the outside then that's when double-sided is incredibly incredibly important for using your favor box dies for constructing your own um, boxes for making your envelope something where you're going to see the inside just as much as the outside i absolutely love this card it really is i mean it is just the classiest card that one isn't it beautiful great for things like invitations weddings new baby cards i think are awesome in that colorway as well the price is amazing on this as well guys uh, just to give you an idea if you are a platinum member uh, you're going to get what oh you're going to get another fight you get for 20 pounds today as a platinum member in the uk 30 dollars 40 Amazing value. Uh, make sure you're adding one of those in if you are going for the pop-out numbers. A lot of lovely chat uh, on, over on socials. Um, Jennifer was asking, what was the white card that you used originally? So, um, Leanne, sorry. I used our white stamping card. Perfectly. Um, because it's a good 300 GSM. It's just a very good all-purpose, good quality all-purpose white cardstock. It's what I make all of my card bases in. Um, and so, yes, I would always recommend that for anything like this. Awesome. Uh, Yolanda says, uh, how lovely Leanne's teaching style. She goes at the perfect pace. There you are. Uh, Stacey says, Leanne is a perfect teacher. She explains the demonstrations inch by inch. So thank you, Leanne. How lovely is that? Oh, thank you very much. I'm really touched. Do you know what? It's lovely. It's like going back to my roots because before I worked for Crafters Companion, I was a teacher. Um, yeah, I was in the NH of adults. Um, but it's like, going back to, it's like going back to my roots. I won't oh. sing it for you. Well, it suits you. It really does. <laughs> Should we drop back in with Michelle, see how she's yes. getting on? Uh, she's she's uh, beavering away uh, over in uh, New Jersey. Are you okay there, Michelle? Yeah. Fabulous. <gasps> oh, Michelle is, Michelle's zoomed off into the Honestly, lead. Check you out, Michelle. Michelle has nothing to learn. Nothing, <laughs> not a thing. <laughs> right, I'm glad you're getting on okay, Michelle. I'm not going to hassle you too much. I don't want to be a craft botherer, uh, so I'll let you crack on and we'll come back uh, at the end, see how you've got on. I've been hearing a lot of things about your earrings, by the way, Michelle. Uh, yeah. What you got on today? 
Um, pink Cars. car. Oh, awesome. Someone told me you got fire extinguisher earrings. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, Michelle, have you made them from Shrinky Dink? I have not. My husband bought them for me. Oh, we need some earrings like that over here, Joe. I feel like if you can do me a clip on, I am game, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, I'll let you crack on, Michelle. We'll, uh, we'll, un we'll unpause ourselves now, Leanne, if that's okay. right with you. Absolutely. So we've got our card base ready and we've got the little pop out numbers in there and we've decorated with those two little uh, panels that we've cut out just with our scrap card stock. And so we're ready now to decorate the numbers themselves. So what we're going to do is take our number two and eight again. Let me move my card out of it and my glasses. Um, we're going to take the number two and eight again and we're going to run that through our die cutting machine. So I'm doing that with a piece of this lovely blue centura because I've got a little piece of that waste now because I did my lovely little panels before so I'm always looking at how I can bring all of the colours into the different elements of the card um, so that they tie in and it looks like it's been designed that way so I've got the number two and eight I've got my plates again and we're just going to run that through the Gemini machine those those you don't need your Gemini for that that could go they could go in your junior I actually I'm going to get my ruler out I think potentially they might go in the mini but I'll I'll check and let you know um, if you're cutting out the little decorative pieces like this and you don't want to put it through your big electronic machine, then you can do that. Um, you, can also throw it on the, you can also throw it on the floor, just as I have. Let's do that again, should we? Let's find the number two again. Now, where's the die gone? Here it is. No, that's not it. No, oh, I've lost the number two, guys. You, you've lost me. I'm just putting on some of that glorious orange hand Gosh. cream tester that you gave me, uh, oh, Leanne. Oh, lovely. So I'm just doing a little bit of, you know, I'm just, just having a bit of me time uh, over here. I've just got, just got my... Uh, oh, she's got it! Boom! Found it! Do you do that at home? Please let me know. Do you do that at home? Do you drop things on the floor, never to be found again? Or is it only me? If you drop something on the floor, food-wise, do you pick it up and eat it? That's what I want to know. Yeah, five-second rule. Sorry? Oh, five-second five rule. rule. Five-day rule in our house. Is it? No, we don't have a five-day rule. We'll have a five-second. Well, it depends where it is. I mean, if it was on a bus station floor, it stays. Oh, no, there. no. Only the, the wooden floor at home. And um, look, to be honest, we're on a full lockdown. There's only my feet that's been on that floor. So yes. as far as I'm concerned, if it's at home, fair game. Yeah, if it's at home, it could be there for five minutes. <laughs> I would, I would, I'm not going to waste food, especially not if it's good food. Um, but yeah, if I'm outside, then stay in there. Going in the bin. Picking it up and putting it in the bin. Right, I'm cutting out my number two and eight again. And this time, I'm not going to throw them on the floor. Let Joe know if you throw things on the floor all the time. I do. I'm just so clumsy. Um, fat, that's your next die, Diane. Uh, di <laughs> Let me try it again. That's your next die design, Leanne, for us to use with shrink plastic. How about a range of dies that work with shrink plastic? Oh, great idea. I love that idea, actually. Mm. I really do. I need to let you know as well that Sarah has been letting cats out of bags out about Christmas uh, signature collections. I don't know if you've seen and heard, but I just said Leanne is going to be fuming. What? So tell me again. She basically let everyone know what one of the signature collections are for Christmas. She did not. Yeah. Cut away from me so I can tell Leanne which one it was. <gasps> ah! I know. What's she like? I'm going to have to send her a message. <laughs> she could say, she basically said it, she said it live, and then as she said it, she was like, oh, I couldn't, uh, no, maybe, oh, 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 too late. Gone. Yeah, it's out there in the world now. Go back <gasps> to Tuesday night's show if you want to see what it was. Launch I'm going party. to do that, the little monster. Yeah. <gasps> oh, she's naughty. Now, what I'm doing is just cutting around, cutting around the number um, roughly, just to get it out of the big bit of cardstock, and then I'm going to show you how to trim it down. So I've got that out of the pl out of the way there, and then what we're going to do is where the score line is, which you'll, you can, oh there, you can see that lovely. Oh yeah. Where the score line is, that's the guide for your scissors or your craft knife where to trim it off. So you would do it there. And then you will do it at the bottom as well. So wherever the score line is, just follow that along. And actually, just gonna snip that out of the way. And then you can follow along more neatly. There we go. Along the score line, snip it off. So there's my number two. And I'm going to do the same with the number eight. Find the score line with my scissors, line it up, snip. Now, this is A4 cardstock that you're using here, isn't it, Leanne? It is. A few questions coming through from our US view viewers. Uh, Monica's talking about different um, sizes of card. She says in the US, you've got an 8.5 by 11 inch. That's US letter size, isn't it? Yes. Which is exactly the same. We do the same. Do we do the same colours uh, there as well in the same colourways? 
Uh, but any of that car stock, it's, that, it's all going to be that similar weight, isn't it, that Century of Pearl? It is, absolutely it is. And um, the reason we do a 5 by 7 card is because over there in the USA and here in the UK, you can both get a 5 by 7 card out of a sheet of A4 or out of a sheet of 8.5 by 11, so that our measurements are the same for all of you following along. And it doesn't matter which size of cardstock you've got, you're going to be able to do it. With the A3 cardstock there, that's going to cut down into two equivalent sheets of A4, so you'd be able to get two full card bases um, from each sheet of that A3. So Love now that. that I've cut my numbers out, I'm going to stick them in place. And again, I will do this with a dry glue rather than a wet glue because I don't want any wet glue to squidge out, get under my numbers and make those flat so that they don't have that kinetic feel to them anymore. And what I like to do is just use our dotty tape runner for that because, for example, on here, on the back of the eight, I can go straight over those holes, know that I'm not getting any glue where I don't need it. It's lovely and covered all over and it's ready for me to paper piece. So I like to put my card flat line that up on the score line there make sure it's all where i want it to be and i'm actually lining up the little holes in the center to make sure i can't see any white card showing through which lets me know i've got that in the right place and then that will pop forward and i'll do the same with the number two perfect okay and it just means it stands out from the back white card then brilliant a lot of you chatting away a lot of people talking about losing stuff um Dale often drops dies when taking the sandwich out of the Gemini. I mean, I guess you could tape them down, couldn't you? It would be a bit... Well, be that's exactly idea. what I did. So I hadn't taped them down. I took my, um, my plates out of the machine with gusto. Went like that and the die shot out the end. So, yes, that's exactly, it's exactly, what, exactly what I did. You uh, can tape them down. Vicky says she always drops things on the floor in the craft room, but she has to find it straight away. All the cats get it. Nightmare. Oh. Um, Sharon does hates nothing. There's nothing worse than losing a magnet. Sharon says. The I think she agree. seems to drop losing a magnet. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, and Maureen has to find anything. If she loses something, she hates it. She has got to find it immediately, Leanne. She cannot go about her day until she's found it. She has to know where it is. She has to know immediately. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, I think that's absolutely fair enough. Now, there we go. So we've decorated the number two and the eight. So now we're just going to decorate the outside of our card and the inside of our card. Now, there's those fabulous um, dies and stamps that come with the collection, isn't there? And, you know, they've got the bunting, you've got all the little dies, you've got the little presents that match. So I've got a couple of these already done. Should we, do you want to cut them all out, Jo? Uh, yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa says uh, she struggles getting in and out of her chair, uh, so she shouts when she drops anything, pick up on aisle seven, and then her partner comes in and picks it up for her. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Love I her. That's fantastic. She says my fantastic partner, fantastic in capitals, picks that, it up for me. I absolutely love that. I so need to try and adopt that at home. I'm not sure Mr. C would be I as on I don't board. know if is gonna, uh <laughs> is going to adopt that, do you? I don't think Simundo is going to adopt that at all. I think he's going to be, um, he's probably going to, he's probably going to shout, Pick it up yourself on aisle seven. <laughs> <laughs> he probably, probably is. <laughs> I, would, I would bet all I'm worth mm. on that, I have to say. Now what I've got here is a piece of Nina, um, Nina Solar White. And I've got a finesse alcohol-proof ink pad. And then with your uh, rocker block, your little stamping platform, whatever your poison is, uh, we're going to stamp the little bits that we want to decorate with and I think I'm going to have I'm going to have some bunting so let's pop the bunting on here now if anyone went for just the numbers on their own and they bought when we bought this collection out Leanne mm -hmm. what would your advice be just all of we do a lot of sort of stamps and dies around this sort of size so we could bring other stuff in if we wanted to like some staycation bits and bobs like uh, the princess stuff or the unicorns for our milk cartons or our pop-up collections I feel like we've got really good recently of creating a lot of stamps and dies that are all of a similar size so they'll work together don't they and we've made a conscious effort to do that Joe. oh hey Oh, bless you. oh, excuse me. That just, oh, it's a good job you didn't see that. But that happened to I'm me not, yesterday. I'm not an elegant sneezer. And it just came out of the blue. Um, we've made a conscious effort to do that, Jo. Um, and it's great that you've noticed that, actually. But one of the things I would say about the numbers is, doesn't matter the style, doesn't matter the type, doesn't matter if you're uh, you know, a person who likes to just do monochrome, if you like cute, if you like floral, if you like grungy, if it's masculine, if you like embossing. 
every single one of those techniques works with these numbers because it's a number at the end of the day. So it's not specific to a, t a style. But what it does do, especially if you're struggling um, with how, how to make a card or who to make a card for or what to put on there, it just gives you something to frame. So you've got those numbers and then all you need to do is work out how you decorate around them. Um, makes, it makes it so much easier, I think. Um, and I love being able to send, especially you know, 21, 40, but you know, people have birthdays all the year. What about your 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th birthday? Um, and so it's just great for being able to customise, I think, Joe. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Michael says that here, hi, uh, Leanne, my wife Shirley used to lose dyes, etc. So I made her a craft table with raised edges. No problem now. Uh, love the demos and the banter. Oh, what a great idea. It's a little, just a little lip on the edge of your craft table. That's a fantastic idea. And it's going to stop idea. you knocking things off the front. I think it's a great idea. I really idea. like that. So I've stamped those down and then I've got my dies. I've got my dies. I'll just I'll hurt my finger there a little bit, but oh, you be careful. Are you okay? Do we need to stop the show or do I yeah. need to get a violin out? No, no, or? I'm all right. Fine. Okay, good. As long as you're all right. No, I'm absolutely fine. Um, and Quick, bring the band in. <laughs> bring them around. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm just about to line up my die line up my die with this piece of bunting so i've stamped it out and now i've got my die over the top and what i'm doing is just checking that um i can't see any of those black lines from the stamp and what that does is let me know that i've got this in the right place uh, gilmore's so letting me know, know that lovely. yesterday whilst i'm unpack unpacking some crafts companion boxes they put their scissors down and they've not yet found them <gasps> Really? Oh, do you know, this happens to me at home all the time. Check the rubbish. And I, oh, I, I am often down oh. in the bin room diving in those bins to get stuff out to check that I haven't left anything in it. I do it all the time. Really? Yeah. Check the when bin. When you've got a communal bin room and there's 69 apartments, you get very strange looks. I bet you get very strange looks. Mm. You don't go down in your robe, do you, Joe? Not in me, not in me uh, tropical robe. No, mm. no. I put my joggers on for that. Good. Okay, so let's one more. I've got the little candle one here. We'll line these up. We'll run these through. We'll have a look at how to colour them and how to finish decorating your finished card. I think the decorating really is entirely up to you. I think the most important thing for you to learn in this particular craft along was how to actually get those numbers to pop out of the card as easily as they have. Awesome. Um, but, you know, it's nice to see a little bit of decoration too, isn't it? So Always. layer up your plates, pop them through again. Uh, loads of you still chatting away. Uh, Rosalind says, I have black flooring, and when something drops, it disappears into the abyss. Uh, I've got like a textured, um, it's, it's called engineered oak. I don't know why I felt the need to do this. Uh, but it's basically like a textured wood floor, and you can't see anything on it. Apart from the dust, you can see all the dust. But you drop something, impossible, Leanne. Um, I've got a wood floor. Like, so, I mean, you know, for example, if you drop something when you were cooking, would you not like you know you dropped flowers would you not would, would you not see that or is it just what color is it it's like a, it's quite light but because it's textured i don't mm. know what it is it's got like it's like it's got grooves in it it's quite it's quite groovy yeah. groovy baby groovy baby yeah. right so we'll cut them out and this is where you're going to get your tri blend marker so i've got a little piece of scrap white card and my tri blends here they are, the three colours that we talked about getting, and then we're just going to colour our bunting in. So oh, on the lovely. scrap card, we're going to start with uh, the lightest colour of the green, and that's coming at the end of this piece of bunting. And you don't need to be too precise with your blending on this because you're just getting a little bit of an ombre. Do you not You've think that bunting is one of those things that doesn't look like what it's called? That's very true. I isn't never it? really thought of it. It really is, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you don't look at that and think bunt. You think flag tape, don't you? Or, you know, something like that. Yeah. It must, well, let's Google where it comes from. I'm on it. Uh, Melanie says, uh, I'm always amazed how far away an item that I drop has gone. Never where I think it falls. Drinks banned from the craft area when I knocked over a glass of cola recently. <gasps> cola mm. is the worst, isn't it? Mm -mm -mm. I've, what I've done in the past lots of times when I'm uh, colouring and I've got my Spectrum water products out is I've dipped my paintbrush in my gin glass. Were you worried about the crafting or the gin? I don't know what was the worst. 
But um, is that worse than drinking your painting water? I've done that too. I bet it was that all was, very glittery. That was gross. <laughs> was it the sparkle pens, was yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it was actually. Was it? Uh, yeah. Wow. And that was absolute, that wasn't pleasant, I have to say. I mean, obviously I didn't die, I'm here. It's not <laughs> going to kill you, but it wasn't pleasant. Right. However, when I dipped my paintbrush in my gin, I wasn't wasting the gin. No, absolutely no. not. So I did, I did finish drinking that, that I have uh, to say. Susie T can't stop giggling at the thought of Joe in his tropical robe down in the bin room searching through the trash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neither can I, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it'll work. Uh, how this is a great, this is a, I don't know what's going on. Uh, this is a great question from Stephen uh, who asks, how would you do a card with two of the same numbers? Oh, so oh that's 22. a good question. That is a good question, isn't it? That is a good question. I can actually, um, before the, uh, what, what time is it? I feel like We've I'm in a time warp. an hour. We're about just nearly halfway through at the moment. Oh, so before the end of the, the show show, the end of the, it's not, it's not Saturday Night Takeaway. There's no end of the show show. I had to say, there's an end of the show show. <laughs> Starting again this week, I think. Saturday Night Takeaway. But you won't be um, watching that because I'll be here on my own at 7pm. So everyone will be watching Oh no, We'll TV, all be watching you. We'll record end of the show show. And um, I will show you how to do that because that's an excellent question. And none of these demonstrations have that. But I'm going to show you because I want you all at home to know how to do that. So I'm Fabulous. just going to continue colouring in my bunting. I'm now going to do the same with the blue. So you see what I'm doing is I'm putting the light at the bottom with my tri-blend, then the dark at the top, and then I'm taking the middle colour and joining the two together. And you could do any colouring medium, I'm guessing, any, couldn't you, Leanne? Yeah, I mean, honestly, do it with a pencil, do it with your watercolour, colour it out on watercolour card, colour it, in, colour it in one solid colour, don't worry about ombre in it. Yeah. Um, cut it out, cut, stamp it onto some patterned paper and cut it out with your dye on patterned paper and you've got little flowery ditzy bunting. I mean, um, could you just, just forego the stamp and just cut it out of some glitter card or some mirror card if you wanted uh, to? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. 100%. Of course you could. Yeah, absolutely. Just whatever you've got at home, whatever you Ooh, want to do. Lisa would like you to know that they have hot cross bun flavoured gin. <gasps> oh, now I don't know whether I love that idea or hate it. Well, I'd imagine it's quite nice because I'd imagine it's quite sweet and a bit mm. citrusy. Because really, See, what I'm else does a hot cross bun taste of other than citrusy sweetness? So I'm thinking cinnamon. Mmm. And I don't know if I would love but that. But they're only very gently sweet cinnamon, aren't they? So I hope it wouldn't be too cinnamony. Mmm. Well, uh, you know what? It's going to have to happen, Joe. I'm going to have to buy some and try it. We'll have to buy some and try it. Yeah. My, I've got some rhubarb liqueur that turned up today. Oh. Oh yeah. Delish. Do you know what I've done recently? I've I've avoided doing it. Um, up till now, but then our Sarah gifted me one, and and now I've subscribed to the Gin of the Month box. Oh really? Yeah, I've done it. I'm in. I'm all oh, in. Is it one of the local ones? No, it's the oh. it's the one that's always popping up on social media feeds. Ah, the gin boxes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I've done my bunting there. I would do exactly the same, exactly the same concept for the parcels, and exactly the same concept for the candles that we cut out. And then you can just start decorating uh, your card together. So let's start deciding where we're going to put the little pieces. I'm going to have my, I'm going to have some foam pads. Um, don't tell Craig, because I always tell him off for using foam pads. Do you? Yeah. And now you're using them? I am and I'm using them. Don't tell him. Doesn't, what, he doesn't, what he hasn't seen, he doesn't need to know. And everybody at home will keep our secrets, won't you? Uh, little foam pad on here. This is why, because look, that's why. Because I can't do it. Um, Mary Pat says, good morning everyone. I've been quietly watching because I really needed to learn how to use these number dies and I can't seem to learn and chat at the same time. Bye Jeeves, I think I've got it. There you go. Oh, oh, so I'm it's been a success, even if it's just Mary that's got it. Oh, you know, Mary. We get some use out of these. I think we've succeeded, Leanne. Yes. We? Well, do you know, Mary, thank you so much for letting us know. That's really lovely. I'm very, very grateful. So I've got uh, my little bit of bunting and I've got my little foam pads behind. That's just going to get put on there cute and then little parcels shall I foam pad them why not they can go they can go down here oh oh see this is why I'm useless with them honestly Joe little parcels can go here just remembering where I'm putting everything reminding myself I've got my little candles here's another one here do you know how many do you know how many candles are there Joe four you know candles four candles Yay. Can you remember that sketch? <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, in the States, we call it a banner, not bunting. Oh. Makes more sense. It does. 
Well, does it? What's a, is it banner? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess. It makes, I mean, uh, every time I hear you guys say bunting, I think of the nursery rhyme. Buy baby bunting. Daddy's gone a hunting. Gone to get a rabbit skin to wrap the baby bunting in. Yeah. It's a popular surname, bunting, isn't it? Is it? Hmm. Oh. Is that uh, not bunt on, not bunting? No, bunting. I know a few buntings. Not bunt on. Uh, bunting. Like beef ting. No, I was going to say not beef ting. Not beef ting. No. <laughs> but you've got to explain what beef ting is now, have, in case, anyone does, in case anyone's joining us. <laughs> Go on, George. I'm not explaining it. It's Leanne's <laughs> word, not mine. So I was watching a um, one of those celebrity programs, Big Brother, Celebrity Big Brother, and they were having they were having a bit of a they were having an altercation, and some <laughs> and somebody on there said, "I can't do the accent. Don't have a beef ting with me." And I. Are they speaking in another language? What on earth is a beef ting? So I had to come out and ask all of my younger, cooler um, friends what on earth a beef ting was. And ting is a lazy way of saying thing. And beef is if you've got a beef with somebody, if you've got a problem with someone. So this person had a problem with them, a beef ting. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense to me. No. It's like another language. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Just say, have you got a problem with me, pet? What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong with that? But then most people who think that you're asking if you've got a pro people, someone's got a problem with the, the pet that you own, but it's not. Problem with me pet means with oh. me, mate, doesn't it? It does, mate. So oh pet gosh, is we're going to go round and round in circles here. So we are, but actually pet is a very colloquial way. It's an endearment. It can be, it can be used in two different ways, actually. It's very much a northeast thing. Um, so you can use it as a term of endearment. So if I said, Joe, would you like a cup of tea, pet? That's said with love, okay? But if you said, have you got a beef with me, pet? That's said with a little bit of mild aggression. What's your problem? So it can be used in two different ways, the word pet up here in the northeast. I mean, let's just say you're not learning stuff on, uh, on this uh, craft along, Joe. You do, indeed. You always learn loads uh, on the craft along. Um, lots of questions coming in about different uses for the number dies, and we'll do that towards the end. We'll, we'll work through uh, a few of these different questions that I've got coming in at the moment. Please keep do keep them coming in uh, because they are it's always lovely uh, when we're able to learn together uh, so is that that's pretty much the end of that one uh, is it Leanne Absolutely. I tell you I tell you what then should we play uh, let's play a piece of video give everyone a little chance to sort of regroup and get themselves finished off uh, and then we'll drop back and see how everyone's getting on uh, let's share with you all the details of Club Inspire welcome to Club Inspire our free loyalty club as a member of the club, you can save up to 20% every time you shop with us. For every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to silver membership, where you'll get 10% discount, plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a gold member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order, and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. When you reach 1500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends, to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. We'll send you a completely free quarterly Digimag direct into your inbox, giving you lots of hints, tips, inspiration, additional offers and some sneaky behind the scenes gossip from the team. So what are you waiting for? Become a member of our club today. 
all the details there of the fabulous club that is, of course, Club Inspire, uh, helping you get even better discounts. Uh, there's a few things I want to share with you, and then we'll drop back in. We're just going to give you guys just a, a few more minutes just to get yourself uh, finished up. There's a nice little ink pad collection that Leanne's put together for us uh, that will work perfectly with this craft along for you. Uh, will go uh, well with the colour combos that are in here. I just want to share those with you. So uh, you've got the Midnight in here, which is this one just here. Uh, you've also got the um, crushed velvet as well. Now these are the quick dry ink pads, which are brilliant for stamping. Uh, you've got three quick dries, and you've also got a alcohol proof. So you've got your midnight. You've then got this one here, which is a crushed velvet. The fuchsia, which is fabulous. I love the fuchsia. And you've then got the noir black in there as well. This is Leanne's selection here as well. $14.97 or $20.85. Really brilliant value for money there. Uh, right, should we drop back in on Michelle, Leanne? What do you think? Yes, I'd love to. Okay, let's go uh, and have a look. Uh, a little birdie tells me she's got new earrings on. I'm very <gasps> excited about that. And uh, Chow Chow might be around as well. Yeah, where's the cat? Is he, is he, he there? Oh, we're gonna meet Chow Chow. Oh, here he comes. Oh, oh, look oh, look at his eyes. Is he your crafty mascot, Michelle? Yes, she is. Oh, gee, sorry. Oh, super, super cute. I love his little, uh, her little white paws. Super adorable. Hey, hi. Hi, Chow Chow. <laughs> hi. She is like, Mum, oh, put me down. She uh, is beautiful. Gorgeous. Michelle, how, how are you getting on there? Um, I did the outside, but I have to put words on it. Oh. And I did quite a bit of the inside. Beautiful. Uh, that I is think, great, isn't it? I think yours is nicer than mine. <laughs> that's, a, that's a true story. That's beautiful, that. I really love it, Michelle. Uh, have, you been made, have you made much with these pop-out numbers, Michelle? Have you been getting on with them? Have you found them pretty easy to put them together? They're very easy. They're easier than the pop-out words. Yeah, I agree, actually. I think the pop-out words are great, but yeah, these are even more straightforward. Do you know what I was just saying? I, I think Leanne's done such an amazing job of explaining it, Michelle. I was just saying, I think I might get the stuff and take it home and try and do it myself. We'll see. Sure. We'll see how that goes. Uh, now, what are you going to be, what's in store for the rest of your day and the rest of your weekend, Michelle? Have you got lots of lovely crafty things planned? Yes, I finished my, I made two birthday cards for my husband. His birthday is Monday. Awesome. Happy birthday for Monday. Mr. Michelle. What's Mr. Michelle's name? Oh, that's lovely. Tracy. Awesome, Tracy. Well, happy birthday for Monday. Well, Isn't that gorgeous, Leanne? Mother -in -law. His birthday passed too. Ah. Oh, very nice. Beautiful. Love that. So the pop out, the explosion card was my husband's, and then I made this one. It's like a little Aladdin's cave of fabulousness there, isn't it? <gasps> love that, Leanne. I love that. That's one of my favourite sentiment sets, I have to say, Michelle. I adore it. Oh, oh look at that. Nice. Oh, very nice, Michelle. <gasps> love it, Michelle. Oh, look at that. I really love that a lot. That very is nice. Just gorgeous. Is that a is that a stove top you've got there or a barbecue grill? A stove so top. That's How fabulous. fabulous is that? Yeah. yeah. You're clearly Amazing. a very talented crafter, Michelle. Uh, it's a Thank pleasure uh, to have you uh, with us on the shows as well. Have you enjoyed being part of the Craft Along today? Uh, I have. It's very much fun. Oh, well, it's an absolute pleasure to have uh, you with us again. And who knows, maybe you'll come and join us again soon on one of our shows, Michelle. How about that? I would love to. Fabulous. Uh, well, uh, thanks from me. Uh, Leanne as well. It was a pleasure to have Michelle with us, wasn't it? Oh, do you know, it's been wonderful, Michelle, meeting you and crafting along with you there in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Sweater weather. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Take care, uh, Michelle. Uh, have a great day, you. Michelle. Oh, what a legend Michelle is. Uh, such a pleasure uh, to have Michelle uh, joining us. Now, I know you've got another craft along, haven't you, Leanne? Yeah. But we're sort of going to maybe up. up the speed a little bit. Yeah. So uh, if you want to craft along with us, then absolutely do. Uh, but if we get a bit, uh, we're not going to take so many pauses, basically, because it's like a bonus extra one we're giving you, isn't it, Leanne? Because we, we shared with you all the details you needed to make it. So we're going to do it as well. We're not going to take the pauses. So if you do get a bit lost, don't worry. What I'd say is maybe put it to one side and then come back to it uh, a little bit later. You can do that. I know a lot of you will have been watching now and are ready 
to place an order for the numbers themselves. If you want to, we have uh, got the same launch offer basically available for you. £80 or $99, you get all the numbers that you need. Leanne's going to talk to you as well how about you can use the same number uh, in the one project, which is absolutely awesome. So you've got zero through nine there. What you're also getting in this offer as well is that all of those beautiful decorative elements that Leanne just showed you there. These are the pop-out number stamp and die set. And we've also got the sentiment set available for you as well. So you've got absolutely all of that there. And I mean, and there is more sentiments there than you are ever going to need, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, what we've um, also got there, of course, is you can use your Club Inspire discount if you wish. Club Inspire members in the UK save 35.95 compared to buying the individuals. Uh, that's uh, 60 four um, pounds that's you're actually saving more than that I've got that wrong have I no I have got it right <laughs> 64 pounds today I'm having one of those days honestly you can tell it's Friday guys 7920 if you're as a club inspire platinum member in the US inspire platinum members US stateside say 4555 Oh, which I think is absolutely fabulous. Really great on what is a very new collection. I'm not going to give you the details, details again just now, but you are going, uh, they're very busy for the A3 Century Pearl. I must say as well, don't forget in that big collection, you're also getting these. Now, I think I'm right in saying, Johnny, based on their individual price, you actually get 40 pounds worth of paper pads in this deal. So actually, as a platinum member, you're only spending like 24 pounds on the rest of the collection which is the the hardware if you will so i think it really is a fantastic deal on something that's brand new something that's conceptual as well which i think is awesome it, when i say something that's conceptual what i mean is something that you can create a lot of different concepts with so even if you did the same colorway and the same numbers you could make it look so so different just by changing the card style that you are using uh, as you go through um lots of people chatting away lots of questions still coming and i'll pop them across to leanne as we go through uh, but I think, Leanne, if you're ready, is it time for your second, um, your second sort of semi-craft along? We're going to call it a semi-craft along this one, eh? Oh, I, I, I love the idea of that. I'm ready, Joe. So we're going to, I've got this time, I've got this card pad, because this is also another favourite of mine, um, which has these beautiful pearl, oh, that red, so this colour, Joe, just preview for everybody, this is the new colour that I'm going to do my bedroom in. Oh, sorry. You, you're going to be your bedroom's going to be that colour. Yeah. The boudoir. Yeah. Can you is. take the paper to the shop and like be? Can you make that paint for me? I'm going to have to because that that is the colour I want in my room. And That's what you want, you get, Leanne. Yeah. What I want, I get. Of course, of course. always, all, every time. I would, don't don't tell Simon or that. I'm not sure he would actually absolutely agree. <laughs> but it's got these beautiful greens in there, and then of course the perfect purple. So I've taken a sheet of perfect purple out and we're going to take our guillotine and cut this to five inches wide and I'm going to use the full 12 inch length for this card. So all I need to do is take it to my guillotine to the five inch mark, cut a five inch length down there and then move the guillotine out of the way. Then what I'm going to do is take my um, scoring board. And I'm now going to score my card. Now, um, let me just show you the card I'm doing, actually, so you can see what I'm talking about as I'm explaining to you. This is the card that I'm going to make. So you can see, actually, the number now is on the front of the card. So here's the inside of my card. Here's the front of the card. It's got this lovely little step so that you can have that 3D number on the front of your card. So I want to show you how to do that. So I've got this... Length of card is 12 inches by 5 inches wide. You can see that there. But this actually feeds perfectly into a question that Leslie Jones has asked, which is okay. how do you use these uh, number dies with a stepper card? So we're going to cover that. Absolutely. You. So I'm now going to make a 5-inch square card. So the base of it is going to be 5 inches. And by, by the base of it, I mean this measurement here. Not this little bit that's sticking out. That's my step for my number. So the actual card base is 5 inches. So what I would do is uh, put that up on your scoreboard with a pencil mark it, or if you've got a big score like we've got here, then you can use the markings on your board. We're going to score at five inches. Let me just do that there. There we go. So it's five inch mark there. That's the half fold for my card. And then I'm going to turn this round now. Because this is 12 inches and I'm making a five inch card, that means I need five inches and five inches for it to be a square card. Because it's a 12 inch piece of card, that gives me two inches spare. So what I do now is find the two inches here 
and score at the two inch mark. Brilliant. Uh, I'd love to say, those of, those of you that completed the first craft along with us uh, and you finished it, please send us in a picture. I'd love to see everyone's and how they vary, wouldn't you, Leanne? I'd love it. Absolutely. I love seeing what people do. When you share your pictures with me on my Facebook page, um, I absolutely go down a Facebook rabbit hole at that point. I absolutely love mm. looking at what everybody does with our product. It just inspires me, makes me so happy. Um, I can spend hours looking at all of your makes. So mm. please do tag me in what you've done. Share your pictures on my Facebook page. Let me see what you're doing. Um, and I also, also try very hard to just make let little comments that you know what I think about it as well. I love to see what our customers mm. are doing. Joe. Absolutely. And we'd love to show them in the show as well. Uh, and you can do that by sending them to studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. Studio at craftscompanion.co.uk. So now to make this card so that it, it steps out at the bottom, we're going to cut the number five on the score of the little two inch extra piece here. Does this make sense, Joe? Total sense. Good. So I've got my two little notches exactly as we had before. So I've got my two little notch, notch, notch. And so what we're going to do is just keep this die still so that it doesn't move from the notches exactly as we did before and we're going to run it through the machine exactly as we did before so I'll pop that awesome. through uh, mary jo is saying uh leanne thank you for this show i bought the whole collection you explained everything so perfectly uh, i've had a message from the dragon uh of, of the boss uh has called us uh that's what she's in my phone as that's why it comes up that's what it comes up What's as come so the dragon. The dragon. <laughs> She's not a dragon. She's anything but. But she is, anything if you get the she. meaning. And she says, um, looks like we're having a lot of fun. She says, Leanne looks hilarious with her specs on the end of her nose. Ever the school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> it's because I can't, I can't see, if I do that, if I put them on proper, now I can't see anything. And I need to see you at home. So now I need to do, yeah, anyway what happens when you get old isn't it it'll come to sarah in good time and i won't take anywhere near as much mickey out of her as she does out with me oh, i do not believe that for <laughs> a split second <laughs> that's true right so now what i've done is i've cut my number five and removed it and i've got my score line so we're going to fold this in exactly the same way as we did before remember so first things first my half fold card and burnish and then we're going to do this little piece and remember the pinch technique so we're pushing this up and that down and pinching the score line because we're just giving it a little bit of memory that will um, come to fruition when we fold the whole thing so push down and up at the same time and remember it doesn't matter if you're not perfect with that because um, you are going to be decorating it and then do the same with the bottom one so there we go, push up and down. So I'm just doing all of the pinching that we were doing before. And then this little piece gets folded like that. This now all gets folded down and means I can burnish. And I've got one little score line there that needs to go in. There we go, make it flat at the bottom. There and there, there. And then all of these. And then I like to open that up and just burnish here. So just make sure that you get all of the crease lines burnished where you need them. There we go. And what that does is create us a standy up card base with the number five on the front. Louise Dunbar did something really clever, I thought, Leanne. And yeah. she has created, let me just share with you, yeah. this here. I thought it was, initially I thought this was a stand, but it yeah. isn't a stand. No. She's popped just a little crease of card on the back just to give it a little bit of extra weight on the back nice. panel. And that is enough just to make sure that that completely stands up all the time. What a little ingenious little idea that is. That is a marvellous, means you've got no giraffe legs. Yeah. I really like that. What's it called? Giraffe legs. Giraffe you know, legs. Like, when a baby giraffe's born, its legs yeah. just go. Yes, exactly. It's yeah. just enough just enough weight to keep it all together. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And just in case you wondered what that noise was I was making, I think I, I probably, so I wasn't just standing and going, at jaw. I was demonstrating giraffe legs going, okay. Just in case you wondered. Have you ever seen a giraffe run out of interest? Um, not in real life. It looks like it's in slow motion, even on the TV, yeah. Does they kind really? of run, they look like they're in slow motion, yeah. Oh. After the show, treat yourself. Go and have yeah, a look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, and also maybe YouTube the sound of baby elephants. That also makes me laugh oh, so a lot. Oh, I love a baby elephant. I love a baby elephant. Right, now, you see me cut out the number and I showed you how to snip it before, didn't I? So I'm not going to show you that again because... Um, you watched and you know how and i've got another one and I, obviously i need to show you how to do two numbers on the front of a card as well don't i my glue pen's just run out so get a new one 
and I'm putting my tape on here just get a nice a nice covering so let's cover this over and I guess any of your pattern papers that you've got, you're able to do this for the hour. You go, this is actually any. one of those you can really just mix it up, can't you? you yeah. But good stash rediscoverers, these. Absolutely. Anything you've got at home. Um, and now I've just got a similar piece of the pip. So the piece of paper that I've pieced my five with. Uh, Blanche got... would just love the uh, cutting and scoring dimensions again of the base card. If of that's this right. one? Yeah, is that all right? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Awesome. So what I had was a 12-inch piece of card stock straight from the pad. Okay, so 12 inch piece of card stuck straight from the pad and I wonder, that's brilliant, thank you. And then all I did, because I want a 5 inch square card, was trim the full length of the 12 inches, 5 inches wide. Okay, so you've got now a 5 inch by 12 inch piece of card stuck. I then scored in at the 5 inch mark because that gives me a half fold 5 inch card. If I hide that bit there, there's my half fold 5 inch which gives me two inches spare from the 12 inches. So I score up at the two inch mark and line my five on that. So just to give you that again, this is now five inches by 12 inches and it's scored at the five inch mark here and at the 10 inch mark here, which gives you a two inch lip to cut your five on and lets you do that step out. Awesome. Leslie Jones is asking as well, would this work with an A4 piece of cardstock? Would it be all about utilising the pinch with an A4 piece of cardstock? Um, you, with an A4 piece of cardstock, you could absolutely do that. And actually, let me just grab a piece and I'll tell you what measurements. Because it's just about altering um, the width. Did you say four inch to me there, Joe? No, before? A4. No? A4, right. So I thought you said, would that make, would, would that be making it a four-inch card, which is exactly what you would be doing. Because, I mean, no matter what your piece of card was, really, could you no. just could you just score the step score and the then step. fold the other bit in half and pinch Absolutely. it, and then you're done? All you need and to then do. You, whatever size it is. It doesn't matter what if it's it? an obscure random size, does it? Because you've got to make your envelope yourself anyway. The only thing you need to be aware of, and let's have a look at this here. So I've got my die. And remember, we're cutting the notches on the score, so that's where we've cut it. As long as you've got a little bit more here to be able to have that bend out, then yes. any of these measurements are fine. So from an A4 piece of cardstock, actually I would cut this at four inches wide. Yep. And then I'd score it four inches down and four inches down and I'd have a smaller, uh, smaller maybe two, 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 one and three quarter step. Um, and so it will Perfect. absolutely work from a piece of A4 or US letter size. Very, very easy to do. Um, it's just fold it in, you know, half and half and then a little step coming out. Right, so now I've got my piece inside which matches the number five, which means when you're looking through the number five here, you get a little glimpse of the same pattern of paper that I've used for the number five that's coming forward. And then what I've done is just stamp out those fabulous little stamps that come in that collection. And I love the fact there's a proper name for these and I never know what they are. The th th for, for what? You know, fifth birthday. Oh, the ordinals. Mm. Oh, there you go. You see, I knew there was a proper word for them and I didn't know them. So I've stamped that out and I've just freehand cut it into a diamond. Um, see, I've learned, that's a word I've learned today, Joe. I like a, I like to learn a word a day. Do you? Yeah. I like a word a day. I got. A, I tell you what started me on it. A friend, a very good friend, um, a mentor, bought me a word a day calendar oh. when I was 18. And set me off on the journey of needing to discover new words. I really do, I really do love it. I bet there's some good word of the day Instagram accounts you can follow, you know. Oh, I never thought of that. Shall I have a look? Shall I have a look what the word of the day is on? Let's have a look. Oh, if we can, oh, I'll, I'll like grab one. You just, I mean, well, only, just, only just for you guys. Thank you, Joe. Let's find a word um, of the day Instagram now, page. Now, I've got here, so I've done, I've stamped the happy and I've freehand cut a little slanted line on that, just with my scissors. It doesn't have to be straight. I've done the same with the ordinal. That was our word of the day, the th. And then I've got my little birthday. Oh, I've done it on the wrong one. Here. Yeah. Honestly, I've done it on the blank one. What am, what am I like? Right, let's put um, these down here. So, word of the day on Instagram uh, is an account that I am now following because I've just gone and looked at it. Uh, their um, word of the day, actually, today is gossamer. Oh, I know what and that is. Do you is. know what that is? In the, let's see if they know in the gallery. Any idea in the what gallery what a gossamer is? I mean, it, you wouldn't use it to describe me. Let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> used to refer to something very light, thin, and insubstantial or delicate. Yeah. 
a gossamer. You would usually you would usually describe um, like a voile, a thin, uh, like a lightweight fabric as a gossamer. Okay, I've heard gossamer lace used before. Yes, mm. yeah, like a very light. There you go. Word of the day: gossamer. Do you know, and do you know what I'll, uh, you know what fun I'll have with that, Joy? Is if I already know the words, I'll be like that. Ha, know that one. Mm. Do you ever lovely, watch, have you ever watched University Challenge and I got love a question it. right? Oh my, what is luck? I'd won the lottery. I'll, honestly, I love it. I love watching anything like that. So there we go. I've just cut the bunting out. To your point earlier, Joe, cutting it from some pretty paper. You know when you said, don't need to bother to stamp and colour it, Leanne, just use paper. It's exactly what we've done there. And then in that same little die set, you've got these lovely little balloons. And so instead of stamping and colouring these, um, all I've done is put... Um, Put those little dies through on some on some glitter cardstock. Um, so yeah, just you don't you don't have to colour them in and take loads of time with it if you don't want to. You can just cut them out in what are your you know your pretty cardstocks at home and decorate it up. And you know I've done this here from scratch with you and how quick that's been. Um, you know, not fast forwarded at all. We've done that together. The only thing I had cut out was the little decorative piece for the number five. And there we go. That's how you can do that lovely little stepper and have a number on the front of a card. How fabulous. I really love that. A very uh, simple, effective uh, card. If you were making, you're batch making these, I think you could really get through them, couldn't you? If you just did all the steps, you know, you're doing five or six of them. Very excited uh, to see you do that. Um, Wendy Waffles, she says she just sent in a picture for us. We'll grab that for you, Wendy. Uh, Rosalind says, I use some mirror or glitter card and they would be great for table numbers at an event on an elevated platform. I think that's a lovely idea. Uh, Leslie says, thank you for a brilliant demo. I bought these a few weeks ago. Can't wait to try. I recommend everyone buy the whole bundle. Uh, Leslie clearly loving them there as well. Uh, I want to just take you back through that uh, cardstock that we've got, the A3 Centura Pearl. I knew it would be because we just don't get to bring it to you anywhere near as often as we would like and it is absolutely gorgeous. So this one here is your Snow White Hint of Gold which is this one here. It is absolutely gorgeous. It really is. It's like a pearlescent white with that sort of really gold undertone. Just beautiful. So you've got that one in there. Uh, what you've also got in here as well is the... Oh, let me find that one. Oh, gosh. It's a long way over there. Uh, we've also got uh, here the Snow White Hint of Silver for you as well, uh, which is fantastic. So you can see here... Exactly the same, just with that gorgeous silver undertone uh, there too. And it really does, when it catches the light, it really does shine. Uh, but then I love my favourite element of this collection. It is, of course, uh, the ivory, because the ivory is double-sided. Therefore, it is perfect for any kind of project where you need to see the inside and the outside of your project. It's great for boxes, wonderful uh, for larger card concepts as well. So, so much uh, that you're going to be able to do with that one just there. Uh, right, let's go back to our Pop Out Numbers collection, uh, because remember what you're getting in here is an awesome, awesome collection for you. You're getting everything. You're getting all the numbers, so you're getting the full collection of the numbers here. Let me hold this up a bit so you can see all the dies uh, as well as those. So you can see that's exactly what you're getting, uh, zero right the way through to nine. Uh, you're going to be able to use multiples on the same project as well. Leanne's going to share that with us before uh, the end of the show. So you're getting the, the dies in there. What you're also getting here is the sentiments and the decorative elements that you need to go with it. So you've got your bunting, your presents, your hearts, your banners there. Then in this one, you've got all of the sentiments that you would need to go alongside that too. Now, what you've also got in this collection are two awesome pay pads. Now, if you bought these at full price, you'd be looking at £20 each. So it's £40 for the two paper pads. Platinum members in the UK, you're only spending another £24 to get the whole collection, which is absolutely awesome. So you've got all of those gorgeous pastel tones. It is colour core as well. So if you want to, oh, sorry, if you want to die cut it, then what you're going to be able to do is uh, have that colour showing through. It also um, just gives you a lot of options if you want to emboss it as well. So 230 GSM, which is a really good all-round card weight, which is fantastic. It's going to be perfect to use in these projects. Then you've got the um, brights here as well. I love, I'm just going to go back to it because I really do love those blues in there. I think they are just really funky. I've got the gorgeous purples all the way through to those lighter tones as well. 36 sheets in each of those, so you've got 72 sheets of 12 by 12, 230 GSM cardstock in total in there for you, which I think is absolutely awesome. Uh, right, we've had a picture in from Sandra. Lots of you starting to send in your pictures of your craft along, and I love this one, Leanne. Oh, wow. Oh, Sandra. Now, I really love that 
that, that you've done that lovely pale blue card base and then you've come down with your dark blue matting layer and then your white and then pieced in your silver glitter so you've got that lovely look through it's almost like a drop shadow into the dark blue behind that looks glorious sandra thank you so much mm, really really fantastic isn't um, it and i've got a message for pam pam who said pam, she sent us PPE a card pam. pam who was sending us a card in pam we've searched high and low in every post box hasn't been delivered yet pam no. sorry when did you send it pam let me know yeah let us know but when it does arrive we'll put a photo on page mm, absolutely will on facebook a photo on facebook pam Bet. Uh, awesome. Uh, Leslie Jones says, thank you for a brilliant demo. I bought these a few weeks ago. Can't wait to try. I recommend everyone buy the whole bundle. I already read that one out, didn't I? Uh, Phyllis says, uh, now that I've seen that last demo, I have to have these pop-out numbers. Do you know what, Phyllis? You can have them. They're here. They're available. Right now, pop yourself over to the website, craftscompanion.co.uk.com.au. Click the shop the show button. And it's all there for you, laid out, ready to go. A couple of different options. Go for the big collection. That's how you're going to get the uh, best deal. If you want to go for the collection without the paper pads, uh, you can. But the value is definitely uh, there in uh, the larger collection. The details here, here are the ones that everyone is going for at the moment, which is fantastic. Please keep getting your pictures into us of what you have completed in the craft along. Would absolutely uh, love to see them. I know you've still got more, though, haven't you, Leanne, that you'd like to share with us? Well, I'm um, just being getting ready because I thought, what was the name of the person who wanted us to do two numbers, um, two numbers together? Was it Sandra? I can't remember. Two numbers, two numbers. Two numbers. Was it Stephen? Stephen. Stephen. Yep. So Stephen, this is for you. Um, what we're going to do is have a look at how we put two numbers together. So what we've got here is, and I'm going to talk in generic card measurements so that if you're in the UK or the USA, you're going to be able to do... Um, to be able to do this just following exactly what I explained to you now. So I've took a full sheet of cardstock. Now that can be a full sheet of US letter size, eight and a half by 11, or a full sheet of A4, UK and Europe. I've then trimmed it to six inches wide. Trimmed to six inches. So now it's six inches wide by the full length of the cardstock. Then what I've done is mark the halfway point here and here. You can do that with actually what I did is I used my scoreboard uh, just to do that, just to get the marks. Or you can do the little pinch technique that I showed you earlier as well. I've got my pencil and I'm going to do a fine line along the centre. And then I'm going to use two numbers the same. Now, I've got number five out, so we'll, we'll use number five. We'll do a 55 card. Why not? So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm just taking the majority sticky off here. Um, I like to do that so I don't ruin the inside of my card. If you're decorating your card, then it doesn't matter. I'm lining up my five on the score line. Now, what I'm doing here is, because you can't put the number, other number on to see where you are, what I do at this point is take a ruler and just eyeball how far in I am from that score line. And so I can see I'm one and a half in from the score line there. So actually, I'm just going to push that a little bit further out until I've got it to one and 1.3, which is fine. That could be your, you know, your three quarters of an inch or half an inch or wherever you are in the USA. The measurement doesn't matter as long as you remember the distance from the piece of card to the inside of your notch. That's the important piece for you to remember. And then I'm going to keep that still and put it through the Gemini machine. So if I pick that piece of cardstock up, pop it onto my plate, layer up my sandwich on top, and then pop it through the machine. Yeah. I'm so excited to play with this collection today. Thank you so much, Leanne, for making it look so easy and achievable. It is easy and achievable, isn't it? Never more easy or achievable than when we bring you a craft along too, because it's all designed for you to follow it along in real time. Do you know what? The, the majority, 99.9% uh, .9 of our products that we bring to you are always easy and achievable when we get to show you how, because we're very careful to make things very easy and accessible for you. We do try very hard to do that. So I've cut that first number five there, Joe. And now what we need to do is remember this measurement here. Uh, whether, it doesn't matter what that measurement is, as long as you can remember what the measurement was. And that's where you bring your ruler in to that point, to whatever that measurement was, and remember I had 1.3, so I've got my 1.3 now, and then I just need to make sure 
when I line up this one with my notches, I make sure that this is at 1.3, the same as the other one. Now, the reason for that is, and I'll just explain that to you, I'll just need to get another piece of tape. Trying to work out the position of these dies, I'm just going to do that, make sure again, 1.3, yes, perfect. Pop that there. Trying to work out the measurement of, if I put a number here, this distance needs to be, and I need to be that distance. I mean, really, that would just uh, that would cook my brain, and I wouldn't be bothered to try to do a double number card. But by just remembering that this was 1.3 in, and now I'm positioning that 1.3 in, this gap in the mis middle is irrelevant. But you've got a nice space irrelevant. from either side, and it looks perfect. What did you say there? Irrelevant. Irrelevant. <laughs> Irrelevant. <laughs> Irrelevant. Oh my word, I don't even know what that means, but thanks for that, Joe. <laughs> we used to work with a producer many, many years ago, and yep. every time anyone said anything that just was a bit off the beaten track, he would just go, irrelevant, move on, come on, this irrelevant. is irrelevant. <laughs> so now, chance? whenever anyone says irrelevant, <laughs> I just can't help but saying, irrelevant, come on, move on. <laughs> oh dear. So now there, I've cut that out. So this middle number is irrelevant. <laughs> and we just need to remember this number and this number. Make them the same so that your numbers are the same, are equidistant from the edge of the cardstock that you can see here. So equidistant there, and then it will just look like you meant it when you put them together um, on the card. So there now we've managed to cut a 55 card, and we would do the folding exactly as we did before. So I would awesome. get my scoreboard, and follow my pencil line, remember? Don't scratch my glasses. Sandra Dundas has asked her a conundrum. Yeah. I've got a conundrum. A conundrum. For you. Yeah, Sandra uh, says Is it possible to do a card that would be two numbers high and four numbers wide? Two numbers high? Wow, why do you want to do that? That's some awesome. So two numbers high and four, four numbers, numbers wide. wide. I mean, it would have to be a sort of on a. I mean, I guess yes, on a has. big twelve so by actually, twelve. You what, would, time, you? what time is it now? It's twenty-five two. The end of the show. So I've got another one which I could show. Will not decorate it. I'll just show you how to cut it, which is a step where you've got one number higher than the other number. Okay. So you've got like a number here and a number here. And actually, I put some. I put them on Facebook and asked you what you wanted to see. By far, the number sixty-eight card was what everybody wanted to see. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If we don't get to the decorating. And then, Sandra, you would do exactly the same. You would just fill up more numbers. You make it a card wider and just fill up your four numbers so you've got all the numbers on two levels. So Fantastic. the answer to that is yes. And I'm going to be able to show you how on the next... Um, you'd think you'd, you'd think we'd planned it, me and Sandra, but we didn't. Um, but yes, so you've all said you want to see how to do that, and I can show you that next. Um, Fabulous. I think it's great, this, not having to decorate. It's just showing you how. And then you can do your decoration yourself at home, can't you? Right, so I've done the score, and then we're going to do exactly as we did before. We push down and push up at the same time, supporting it. So you see my fingers underneath, and then we've got here, push down and push up at the same time. And then we do the same at the bottom here. I haven't rubbed my pencil lines out on this one because, you know, I'm just showing you how. Um, you would have rubbed your pencil lines out before you do this. And then this one, and it's always supporting, push it up. And then this whole thing gets to close. This comes forward. Make sure your numbers are coming forward when you're doing that. Just be careful not to catch them in the wrong place. That's coming up there. Take your time with it. Do your pinching. There we go. Bring that down. Fantastic. There we go, and there we go. Push that up in there. There we are. Once it's been folded and burnished Once a couple of times, it's going to always pop back then, isn't it? Always. It's just that first little pinching and folding that you need to take care of. And once you've done that, there you go, number 55. And awesome. you can see the little bit in the middle, middle is irrelevant because irrelevant. you've got your equidistant from the side, here and here, um, and that's how you do your 55. So Stephen, Stephen, that was for you. Thank you for asking because I hadn't planned on showing that and I think it was brilliant to be able to show everybody at home how you do a, a double number card. You would do exactly um, the same, by the way, for a 100 card. I've got a question in from Samantha Cheney. Who is no relation to Lawrence Cheney, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, if you've been watching RuPaul's Drag Race UK, you're not worried about it. If you haven't, 
You need to get it watched, honestly. Uh, but, uh, yes, I did ask Samantha Chain if she was any relation uh, recently. She said no, sorry. Um, she wants to know about using Centura Pearl cardstock. She's struggling sometimes with it cracking uh, Leanne. Uh, is there a, a sort of way to go get around that? There is a way to get around that. And the way to get round the way to get round it, um, Samantha, it was Samantha, wasn't it? It was yeah. Samantha. Samantha Cheney. Samantha Cheney. The way to get around that is um, score on the Centura side. Now, I know I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you, Samantha, because I know that when you get this all home, you're very often... Gone into a bit of a masterclass now, haven't we? I said two for one, this. I mean, I'm sorry. That's great. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sticking to the rules. You know what I'm like. I never oh, stick to a rule. Oh, going rogue. I mean, Pulling honestly, rank, aren't you? I'm I mean, I'm just a rogue. Honestly, I am. Um, Samantha, always have your decorative, your pretty pearl side facing up towards you. And then when you score it, what you do is you bend the fibres of the pearl coating down into the fibres of the card... And then when you fold and burnish that, you get a beautiful crease Perfect. on the card with absolutely no cracking. Um, I know that it, the, the, what you will be wanting to do at home is to protect the pretty surface of your card and therefore to score on the top surface of this instead. Right, but that's instead. not the correct way. Not the way. Always score on your pretty finished side and then it pushes the fibres in so when you fold it out it's got bend in it and that's how you avoid your cracking. There you are, now you know. Uh, there you are, Samantha Chaining. I hope that uh, sorts that for you, uh, which is awesome. It's very busy, guys. I think a lot of you hadn't bought the numbers, but they were very busy when we launched them. But I think a lot of you, since you've seen how easy it is in this step-by-step -step craft along, have now decided that you're going to grab these numbers because it is very, very busy out there. Remember what you're getting, you're getting the numbers and you're also then getting, of course, remember, the sentiments, which is these ones just here. And we're also going to give you the decorative elements in there too. So you're going to get absolutely everything you need. Remember what you're getting in there too. You are then getting as well the two paper pads. Now, the two paper pads on their own, £40 if you buy them individually. All of it's only £80. Uh, so you're getting a really, really great deal. You can use your Club Inspired discount. Of course, you're all getting some sort of discount. £64 as a Platinum member in the UK. £79.20 as a Platinum member in the US. Platinum member stateside are saving over $45 on that. And that is not to be sniffed at on what is a brand new launch. Uh, we've had some more pictures in. Let's share some of those with you uh, because you guys have been going great guns uh, at home. Uh, Wendy sent this one in. I love this one, don't you, uh, Leanne? Just gorgeous. Wait till you see this. So much glitter, Leanne. <gasps> Me squared. Wendy. How scary was that? Wendy, that is a performance of a card. I adore that. That's got all the glitter on there, hasn't it? Really beautiful, isn't it? Really, really lovely. Gorgeous. Keep sending pictures in. <gasps> Look what, is it Kristen or Kirsten? I think it might be Kirsten, you know. Uh, yeah, it's Kirsten in Ida Oberstein, which is in Germany. Uh, she loves the way I say the place now, apparently. But how gorgeous is that? Do you know what? And so isn't that lovely to show how the first one and this one, very different, same dies, mm. where you can do it understated or you can really make a performance from it. I love that. And check out the difference between Kirsten's and Teresa's. Very different again. <gasps> but equally as gorgeous, mm. I have to say. That's very similar to the one I did earlier, uh, Teresa, with the bunting and what have you. That's, that's looking really lovely. And I love the glitter card. It really makes a pop, doesn't it, piecing the numbers in. Really is fantastic. Loving that. Uh, Karen says, great demonstrations. Love your teaching style, Leanne. Uh, Christine's going to send out her picture in later. She's still working on her craft along. Donna says, I love Donna's surname. I think Donna might have my favourite surname of all our viewers. Donna Calzoni. What a great surname. Oh. Donna Calzoni. I love, I love, the, I love the name, Donna. She says, now, I just was... Tell me, Joe, what do you like in your Calzoni? Anything. Anything. Uh, yeah, usually like uh, pepperoni, uh, mozzarella... Uh, maybe some ham, some mm. mushrooms as well. Yeah, lots exactly. and lots of cheese, obviously. Mm. Um, Donna says, I just received my pop-out numbers. We'll try them this weekend, saving this video. Great point. Remember, you can save or share this video on Facebook. You can bookmark it on YouTube. 
or you can just go back to our website at any point, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. Go to the Crafters TV section and there's a full on-demand library, a full on-demand. It's basically like the Netflix of craft, right? And it's there for you. You can watch every show we've ever done. We were having a conversation the other day, um, Leanne, where we were sort of estimating how long it might take to watch all of them if you sat down and watched them back to back. And we think it might be about three months at the moment to watch <laughs> wow. every single show that's there on that on-demand service for you. So any of our products you own, chances are there's going to be shows over there. You just search for it. It's awesome, isn't it? That is fantastic, isn't it? It's such an educational resource it's not just an education resource it's a community joe um i think we all get to know each other we all get to know each other's names we all help each other out we put comments on there we recognize our friends from the groups a little bit like joy was saying on the video clip the other day it really is just a fantastic friendship group uh, of people who have the same um, hobby and the same desires and likes and wants and we all just help each other out. I love it. I think it's fantastic. And I think it's a great um, resource for people who might not have crafted before and who need to just try a few things out on their journey before they decide what they actually want to buy. It's just brilliant in terms of research for somebody who might want to start their paper craft journey. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. Uh, I think we've got time for another demonstration, haven't we, uh, Leanne? Yeah, one more. Brilliant. Now, this is where... Now, what was the lady's name? Honestly, I'm terrible for names. Who um, wanted to do... It was Sandra Dundas. Two? Sandra, this is for you, Sandra. She lives on the corner. She could have popped in. Oh, Sandra. Do that well when we can. When we're allowed to pop in, Sandra, pop in. Right, now, so what I've got here... And actually, the A3 cardstock that you've got on the shore jaw will be perfect for this absolutely perfect so if you love this concept of a two number stepper that i'm about to show you that a3 cardstock that we've got is going to be what you need now let me just show you here well i'll show you here above should i i'll do it look oh love it oh 68 step look at that on a step two steps so you see sandra what you can do is my technique for just cutting several along you could absolutely do that so you can build the numbers up build the numbers up on the little step so i'm going to show you how to do the little step and you and everybody at home everybody's going to go oh it's going to be a collective one of those because it looks complicated incredibly easy uh, Shah bear wants to know where she needs to send her picture into it's studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk i'll put that little strap on the bottom of the screen for you so you can uh, uh, note that down so i've got my fine lines in here to be able to um score these in the right places i'm going to ex accentuate them so you can see them at home and i can explain the concept to you so i've got a piece of cardstock here and again the length does not really matter um, it's just whatever the length is half is what you need for your card so i'm marking the halfway point and drawing a line so there's my halfway point that is how deep my card is then what i need to do and this is where um, it's crucial for you is work out so that's where my number's going to be here so I can see that there and you use your numbers to help you out with this so here is the top of my number here and so to give myself a little step what I need to work out is what what is that distance now the distance you need to work is so easy because it's literally the measurement of the score line to the cut line there which is two centimeters which is about three quarters of an inch so we need to make sure that we do a line three quarters of an inch above where that is going to cut out so we need a line at the top of my cut line which is there so that's my cut line at the top of that number okay and then whatever this depth is here and i can tell you that's two centimeters three quarters of an inch come down that step and make that score line there and what that's going to do when you line up your numbers now is allow you to get that stepped number in two different places. Now, of course, you won't have solid pencil lines on your finished piece like I've done. I wanted to do that so you can see very clearly what I'm doing to get that stepped effect. So you know that this needs to be the width of this space from the score line to the score line, which is two centimetres, three quarters of an inch, just for reminder's sake. And we do exactly as we did before. So we can do a 68 card or an 86 card. It doesn't really matter. Let's do 86. Let's mix it up. We take our notches. Does anyone else think Bonner's notches every time you say that? Good um, night in Spanish. <laughs> every time you say notches, it's all I can think of. 
That's a fair point. So uh, we line up the little notches there and there with the, with the pencil line going through. And <laughs> oh, then I can't, I can't unthink that now, Jo. Um, and line that up. And then we do exactly the same, exactly the same with this one where we're lining up our notches. And you see what happens is the score line at the bottom now is lining up on that bottom pencil line and your notches are there on that top pencil line. And then, oh, I've got all oh, that stuck to me flipping finger there. Never get off. Do you? Anybody else get the tape stuck to their fingers and can't get it off? And then I'm going to keep that still. Now, shall I just go through again what I've done there? Just yes, please. I'd the love, true concept, love that. Just to make sure everybody understands. So any length of card doesn't matter. Halfway point, draw a line. Line up your first number, your bottom number, on the halfway line with your notches. Then you've got. A line above there on the score line so where that number's ending you see it's lining up perfectly on there a line because this part of the die get another die for you there this here from the score line to here needs a step out of the same distance and you'll see it when we fold it together measure that distance and I can tell you two centimeters three quarters of an inch another line there and line your number notches up on that top line Perfect. Run it, run it through your machine. Okay. Uh, is it 86 you're doing here? 86. Yeah, I was born. Instead of 68. Was it really? Yeah. Do you know how old I was, Joe? I feel in 86. Like yeah. Do you know how old Three I was four? in 86? Pardon? Three or four. Maybe oh, 10. That's very kind of you. 16. Ah. Sweet 16. Oh, I was 16 in 1986, Joe. I had my whole life ahead of me. I was optimistic. I had hopes and dreams. And you accomplished all of them. Living the dream. You are living the dream. Oh, we need to pick a card out of the out of the two that you did. The the uh, the two. Well, we need to do the. T I think we need to let people vote, don't we, Leanne? Out of the two yeah. that you fi completely finished. Sorry, Rachel. Oh, Deborah Sutherland actually letting me know. Deborah, thank you very much on Facebook. Um, so yes, let's vote out of the first two then. Would you like to refresh our memories, Leanne? I would. However, they're not as nice as Sarah's because she picked. She pinched my good demo. Well, uh, I think she needs chucking out of the running. Seriously. <clears throat> I'm just saying. She's in tomorrow. I mean, I would take it off now, but she'll only make me put it back this tomorrow. Is my, this is mine. Awesome. So you've got uh, 28. 28. Or? Or? Fumph. Number five. Yep. Brilliant. There we go. You choose. You choose, guys. What was the first number again? 28. 28 or 5? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> oh, I've got a memory like a sieve today, haven't was I? Was that memorable, that one, that you remembered the number? Right, now you're going to get your um, scoreboard again. And we're going to score our lines. So now we're going to line up this particular line here. So we're lining up our half fold and scoring. Remember, you score all the way up to the number and then you score at the other side of the number to get your score line in place and then we do the same here with these two lines we need to score these so we're scoring up to the base of the number and then we're scoring from the base of the number down to the end of the card line up your uh, pencil line again do exactly the same from the number down to the end of the card from the number out so your score lines not through the number at either side Make sure you get those score lines in place. Okay, so they're in place. And then we just do the pinching and the folding. And this Amanda is where Panda you is time. Amanda Panda is with me now. She can't stop thinking of Buenos every time you say notches now. I'd love <laughs> to be somewhere, you know, a few sangrias in, bidding someone where someone Buenos notches, wouldn't you? Oh gosh, it would be amazing. Soon, Leanne, soon. Right, so a little pinch there. So you see I've pinched the bottom number. So six is six is pinched out, ready. We'll do the same for eight, so we'll pinch it out. And remember, the pinching is pushing up and push, pushing the top down and pulling the number up till they meet and then nipping that score line in place. And then that allows you to push out the number, support it, and that gets all of your score lines where they need to be. Then we can fold our score lines for the card. So we're going to, because it's a half fold, this one's coming in, pinch. And then because we need this to be a step, this one goes back and this one comes forward. Fabulous. And that then gives us a stepped 
86. And so you see this distance here is the distance I was talking to you about in terms of the same distance here. So this distance needs to be the same distance as this to make that number stand out straight. But you couldn't have, have them directly above each other, could you? You would need a little bit you of You would need space. just a tiny gap. You would a little need bit of a space. Tiny gap. So you'd have to have a second step then. You'd always have you a would. double step. A double step. But you okay. would do it in exactly the same sounds way. Like a, sounds like a dance move, doesn't it? A double Just step. A double step. You would just do it in exactly the same way, but you'd have a little bit more space. It's good. That was an excellent demonstration of a double step. Thanks. Did everybody see it? No one saw it. Shall I do it again? Oh, yeah, do it again, Joe. I don't think everybody's seen it. Oh, that's my double step. That's a double it's like step. A dance. I think that's like a, I think that's a, like a body combat move or something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's been years Honestly. since I've been, but you know. <laughs> I mean, John Travolta, eat your heart out. John Travolta, <laughs> eat your heart out. Uh, right, so... Uh, Did that make sense? It made total sense. Yeah, good. 28 is in the lead. You've got two minutes if you'd like to change the um, destiny. I think I'd like to put my 68 in. Too late, sorry, not allowed. No, I can't. Can't, sorry, there's the rules. Mm, no, sorry, it's too late. We've started the voting. The voting. You know, it'd like, you know, it'd be like a, having an election and then we, we add another candidate in halfway through. We can't, just can't do that. I'm sorry, I, Leanne. So I'm, I mean, uh, Samantha Cheney. So she is 68. Si no, sorry. 68. No, can't have it. Even in the comments, people are saying, no, you just can't do that, Leanne. <gasps> uh, no, they're not. Don't fib. They are, honestly. No, I've got the iPad. I mean, I'd love to show I, you, I but I can't. I think everybody's got my iPad. Uh, <laughs> Samantha Cheney says she saved this for later. Um, have the numbers and the alphabets. Thanks for the tutorial, Leanne. You're more than welcome. Oh, oh we've got some pictures. So PBU Pam has sent us the picture of the card that she sent us because it didn't turn up. But look at that. Love oh. hashtag CC. Love that, don't you? I absolutely love that. I can't <gasps> wait for that to turn up. Oh, and look, look at the, the inside. inside. 16 <gasps> years. Oh, my word. Love it, oh, Pam. My, love it. That's absolutely fabulous. Oh, that is brilliant, Pam. And let's have a look at some of the pictures that we've received throughout the course of this show. Here, as you can see, absolutely awesome, aren't they? Uh, Susan Rushton's there, looks fantastic. I'm just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I really, really love them all. Just so brilliant to see that you're, you know, you're crafting along or you're using the products that you've got at home and having a really nice time with them. And every single one of them is, is inspirational, Joe. It is brown cow stunning. Uh, Ange Lim says, whoa, the law court of Joe. Yeah, how dare he? Yeah, I mean, it makes a change, isn't it? it? It's like Judge Judy's gone on Judge Rinder. The tables have turned. Uh, <laughs> lots of you still commenting along. Lots of you still sharing. Oh, wow. It's like that, is it, guys? Everyone's voting it's for, 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 for 68 yeah, now. thanks. See, but it doesn't count because that's 86, not 68. No, it does 86. Now, come on. Come on. You are, you are the de you're a details kind of lady, Leanne. Uh, my detail is that the two numbers are the same. The fact that they've gone in a different direction doesn't matter. So 68 it is. Right. Well, we need to decide now what is the final vote. The winner is 68. That's it. I mean, I'm done. The people have spoken. The people have spoken. Thank you. I love you. Mwah. 68. Ah, there you go. The winner is 68. It's not going to beat Sarah's anyway, so. <gasps> Sarah's, that was mine. Hashtag stolen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, now, should, we, should, I, should I remind you of the uh, big collection? Because uh, we're having a lot of fun in the show. It's been an awesome cross. How have you found your first craft along then? Are you ready to oh, do another one, Leanne? Um, I want to do them all. I think, it, I, honestly, I just want to do them all. I think it's, it's been so much fun having the time to relax and talk to you and interact, see what you're doing, show you those things, respond to your questions. Um, it's just been fantastic. I can't wait to do another one. Brilliant. Uh, there's another one next Saturday, myself and Debbie Fisher. <gasps> and it's, it is on, you know those new credit card dies that we launched, those gorgeous ones oh. with the church and the, the moon and the stars? It's Love. on those. So make sure you join us for those. Mm. And in fact, do you know what? I think even if you're stateside, delivery is so quick at the moment. Even if you order them now, you might get them in time to actually get them uh, for next week. If you've missed them by a couple of days, it wouldn't matter. You'd be able to come back anyway. If you're in the UK, absolutely 100% get them ordered and make sure you join us next week. Uh, what I would say here is if you want to go for the big collection, absolutely, uh, you still can. It is available for you. We've got the full collection as well. They give you that awesome amount of depth and dimension. So remember, you're getting the numbers in there. You're also then getting in here as well the decorative elements. And you're getting there too, all of those different sentiments. It's all coming your way. And of course, you are going to receive the cardstock as well. Just to give you an idea of the context for the price here, Platinum members today, you're paying £64 in the UK for this. The pads on their own are worth £40. So 
I mean, it really is brilliant, brilliant value for money. You've got the pastels, uh, and you've also got uh, those gorgeous brights in there as well. Double-sided, colour core, 36 pages in each, 100, uh, sorry, 230 GSM on a 12 by 12 size. Really brilliant. Uh, have I got time to remind everyone of the Centura Pearl as well, Johnny? Awesome. Let me just grab those and share that with you as well, because it's a fantastic deal of something that we don't really bring you an awful lot of. It's a three pack. So you've got in here your hint of gold in the A3 size. Really lovely weight as well. It's the uh, 310 GSM, uh, as most of the Centura Pearl is. Uh, then this one here, this is your uh, hint of silver. That is the hint of silver, isn't that one? Yeah, this is your hint of silver. Single sided again, you've got 25 sheets here. And then also, oh, the real luxury one is of course that ivory, because the ivory, uh, 20 sheets of this one, but it's double sided, uh, as you can see, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. I know you're going to love that. Now, Leanne, we've got another fabulous show coming up today, haven't we? What are we, can we expect from Colour Me Happy? I haven't done a Colour Me Happy show for ages, so I'm so looking forward to it. I did it last week. But it was it was inks, not pens. So I haven't done like a colour proper purish colouring one for ages. Well, do you know I haven't done a colour me happy probably six or eight weeks, Joe. Wow. It's been a long one for me. So I'm really looking forward to it because you know colouring my first love. Um, we're going to be looking at Illustrator and all of the Illustrator techniques, how to get out of them. I'm doing a colour me happy slash masterclass on Illustrator. I'm just rewriting the rule book. Um, and so if you've got anything that you're struggling with or you want to see, pop a little note on the page, on the post on my Facebook page. I'll look at that before. Um, but I've got all of the demos on there so you can see what I'm going to be doing anyway. And we're going to be looking at all of the flicking and the texture and just how to get the best out of them. Sounds absolutely fantastic. Can't wait uh, to do that with you. Uh, Michelle and it's you says these dogs would be great for kids uh, as well. It's such a pleasure to have Michelle. So thank you, uh, Michelle. Big thanks to Leanne. Thanks to all of you at home as well that took part in this craft along. Remember, we've got another one a week tomorrow uh, with myself and Debbie Fisher. Make sure you join us both for that. A big thanks to the team next door in the gallery. We'll all see you back here in an hour. How's that sound? See you then. Bye.